it was better than Zach Wilson's first start. Yeah, so Billy, actually, I'm glad that you brought up Zach Wilson. Um, would you give up Zach Wilson right now for Sam Ellinger? How deep into this take are you? On today's part of my take, week eight in the NFL. We're going to recap it. Fastest two minutes. We're going to talk about every game. We're watching Sunday Night Football right now. It's erotic. We have uh, what it is. Don't laugh at me, Hank. It is. This is a, a big moment for me, a big game for me. We have football guys of the week. Who's back of the week? Talk maybe a little World Series. 1-1 going into Monday night. And it is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. And they guarantee the lowest price. Uh, Billy or Jake, can you actually look up to see how much the get-in price in Philly on Monday night? It's probably insane, but Game Time has the best deals out there. If you haven't given Game Time a shot yet, don't know what you're waiting for. You guys are going to love this app. We've been using it all year, going to football games, going to baseball games, going to concerts. Billy saw the Yankees play the Astros game three. That was a sad series. What do we have? Get in price. Get in price. Six hundred and sixty-nine dollars. That's okay. That's, that's All right. a hell of a deal. To see the the fightings in the World Series, that's twenty dollars less. When you download the Game Time app and go to the account tab, create a login and redeem code PMT for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with the Game Time app, the exclusive ticketing app of Barstool Sports. So again, go download the Game Time app, go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code PMT for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Game Time, the exclusive ticketing app of Barstool Sports, the best place to find the lowest deals out there. Game Time, go download it right now. Use code PMT and you get $20 off your first purchase. Today is Monday, October 31st, Halloween week. Eight spooky NFL recap. There are lots of tricks and there are lots of treats. Check that candy for for uh, medals. Whoop. We start across the pond where the game was on early because England can't hang on to 1 p.m. Travis Etienne Crumpets proved that not all Clemson first round picks in the 2021 draft are bust. As he rushed all over the Broncos, Guinness Stout defense. That's Irish, boom. Same thing, Teej. It might as well have been a home game for DUI haver Melvin Gordon, who's used to driving on the wrong side of the road. And despite what the TV might say, the yellow line is official when driving. Mr. Unlimited proved that God is back on his side with a game-winning drive to win the game. And they're saying maybe Nathaniel can hack it. Huh? Huh? Broncos 21. Jaguars 17. Whoop, whoop, whoop. To the Meadowlands, where back stateside in New Jersey for Patriots versus Jets, a game that would have gone down a whole lot differently if Mark Wahlberg was there. Ramondre the Giant Stevenson crushed the Jets defense like there were 12 ounce cans of beer. It's been one game with James Tin Robinson playing for injured Brees Hall, and Jets fans are already saying, I don't want to be here anymore. I think you should leave. Last time the Jets beat the Patriots, Zach Wilson was in high school and his girlfriend was only 45. Patriots, 22. The Jets, 17. To Detroit, where Jamal of America Williams had the roller coaster going up for the Lions in the first half with a pair of scores. Alec, worth his weight in gold, scored. Jimmy, two of two times, threw a touchdown to Waddle. Touchdown to Waddle, and Tyreek Henry Hill flashed his great Luf Hansas going for 188 yards in the win. And even though the Lions ownership went to Billy Bats for Dan Campbell, he could end up in a trunk being driven out of town if the losses keep stacking up. Dolphins 31, Lions 27. What? What? Some spread. Some spread. In Minnesota, where all the altar boys at the Popemobile know that the Cardinals love Road Dome. It's a Black Sabbath for Cardinals fans, as KJ Ozzy Osbourne said, 
My mom coming home to pay dirt as Kirk Cousins was Sharon the Rock. <laughs> DeAndre the Giant Hopkins was catching touchdown passes with one hand like there were 12 ounce cans of beer. Vikings 34, the Cardinals 26. In Atlanta, where P.J. Paul Walker brought the Panthers back fast and furious, only to crash and burn as his kicker, Eddie De Niro, looked like he was broke. In a touching tribute to Halloween, D.J. Moore impersonated Ichabod Crane after scoring the game-tying touchdown, losing his head and the game. And if you want to hear something extra spooky, Teach, this October... We're, out, we're done with we're done with October. The Atlanta Falcons are in first place. Falcons 37, Panthers 34. What? Up to the Battle of Pennsylvania, where Ray J. Brown kept getting behind the rear of the defense, making the Steelers look like a car crash again. The Steelers' lone highlight came in the first quarter as, hey, wait a second, what brother is that? It's Derek Boom. Well then, let me be the first to congratulate our producer Hank Lockwood on cashing his bet from last January. After a short 15 years, it seems as though the flash <laughs> in the pan, Mike Tomlin sanity has run its course. The Eagles, 35. The Steelers, 13. In the afternoon slate, we head out west where quarterback Christian McCaffrey threw a touchdown as wide receiver Christian McCaffrey caught a touchdown and running back Christian McCaffrey ran for a touchdown? Oh, some game. As the Niners silence the Rams, Ross Dwelly Kapowski looked hot in the Niners offense as Sean McVay was seen on the sidelines screaming, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so scared to face Kyle Shanahan again. Niners 31, Rams 14. We go back east to Indianapolis. Roof was closed by the way, Teach. Where the commanders were pretending they were the Broncos having a quarterback to high knee do high knee key things on the way to a victory as Sam hold that Ellinger was welcome to the NFL. Terry Bradshaw McLaurin isn't dead yet, Mike Florio, as the receiver went for 113 yards. Jim, or say something, I'm giving up on you might be done with Frank Reich as it's a great big world out there full of coaches that don't suck. Commander 17, the Colts 16. Standing on a corner, Jameis Winston down in NOLA, such a fine sight to watch. It's, it's a, a goose, goose egg, egg, my lord, it's time to cut the cord. Josh got beat by a fire crotch. Come on, Raiders, you're worse than the Gators. And the only bowl you'll be invited to is the one the barber used during the haircut that he gives for Mark Davis. Saints 24, the Raiders 0. Saints go marching. And that is the fastest two minutes brought to you by our friends at Chevy. Chevy has the commanding unstoppable Chevy Silverado. Learn more at Chevy.com. The best truck ever created, the Chevy Silverado. Go to Chevy.com and tell them PMT sent you right now. Week 8 in the books. We're watching the fourth quarter of the Packers' Bills. It is erotic for me. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Yes, I know the Bills still have to cover the spread, but Josh fucking Allen, man. And he is... It's just nice to be able to watch the Packers get embarrassed on Sunday Night Football for a change. Change of pace. Josh is is really good at running people over, and then after they've already been run over, trying to fight them on their way up. Yeah. He doesn't play like a quarterback. He, I, I would like to see Josh Allen play 5% more like a quarterback in terms of taking care nah. of himself when they have double-digit leads only. Nah. I love. I mean, he's just... He is, uh, is I know he, he'll never do it. Is he the most... It's, it's hard because in the NFL, uh, because football's obviously so popular and it's hard to like yeah. root for another quarterback, but Josh Allen, it feels like has the highest approval rating of any team that you're like, isn't your team. So this is kind of where, um, us living on the Maybe. internet, yeah, that might be true. Kinda, it, it skews our perception about things because I saw a study that came out that actually addresses this very question Oh, really? and the number one most like player is Kirk Cousins. Oh, and number two, get out of here. No, no, no. He's Sorry, he's number two. Number one, 
Russell Wilson. Okay, so this so that, study so, doesn't so make that, sense. So that shows yeah, yeah. you how yeah, yeah. Okay. how our brains are warped, and hopefully, if you're listening to this, your brain is also warped. That's maybe by us, whose brains are in turn warped by the internet. So uh, that's a study that's not real football fans. It's, that's people it's who just people. casually watch football every now and then. Like if you watch Josh Allen, and I'm I'm not even talking about like knowing his, his personality, just the way he plays the game, like running people over, throwing absolute rockets downfield. Smiling through it all, he had mm. one play where he just ran it like 15 yards. Oh, that's a shame. The Packers got stuffed on fourth and one, uh, and he he ran it out of bounds, and then he just went. I know this is very trivial, but he just went along the sideline and started high fiving all the fans. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I may. You know what? Let me rephrase it. I don't think there is a closer connection quarterback to city right now than Josh. What Josh Allen has going on in Buffalo. That's probably true. That's all right. So that would be my premise that I'll roll with. I could hear an argument for uh, obviously Patrick Mahomes, Brady in New England would have been the answer for a long time. Like, but what other city? I would say the, the thing with Mahomes is that he's got the 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 wife and brother thing. There's like a little bit which of division we'll never there. bash him for because we love Patrick. No, Mahomes. I know. I'm yeah. saying, right. but like in terms of right. the city, like there's right. people in Kansas City right. who roast Patrick Mahomes' brother, which I'm sure makes Patrick Mahomes in turn be like. That's kind of fucked up. That's right. my brother. Right. I think I think they still love him though. Yeah, they do. No, they of do, course. But, but, but I'm saying about there's like zero. The, there's nothing right. in Josh Allen's like negative yeah. category that right. fans I, I would, would also look at. I would put uh, Baltimore and Lamar up yeah. there. Yeah, they've but got, that's, they've got a pretty close relationship. Not Flacco, yeah, right. But right He's now, no Flacco. Some about yeah, Flacco. Yeah, some about Flacco. Way towards that spiral. Uh, right now, I would say it's not. 100 100 approval rating just because he isn't signed to a long-term deal. I think I think that I, no, all lo- fans want him. I think that there yeah. there's a good amount of Ravens fans that if Lamar was not re-signed by the team for whatever, they would they would take like a leave of absence yeah, no. from cheering for he, the Ravens for he, for like up to a year until they got a good quarterback. He again. definitely has a connection with the city that's that's high up there, but Josh Allen, I yeah, I I don't think I don't think there's anyone right now. I think if you're a real football fan, you can't watch Josh Allen play and be like, I don't care for him. Yeah, right. It Russell just, Wilson, Broncos just, country. Bronco, Russell yeah. Wilson. That's, yeah, we should do the inverse. Yeah, what's the what's the least uh, approval rating? Probably Russell Wilson. Um, I, feel like, I feel like Kyler is wearing thin in Arizona right now. I, I'm going to say this, and I, this might be biased, but I, I do think there are a lot of Packers fans that are not super pumped about w- the way the Packers are playing. Maybe and a little Aaron Rodgers, Maybe a little bit. And Aaron Rodgers having the amount of money that he has and like blaming everyone else besides himself. Uh, based on the tailgate situation, I feel like Cleveland Browns fans really love Deshaun. That's true. That's true. Yeah, right, no, I think so, it's Josh. It's not even close. Yeah, I think that's, it is yeah, Josh. Yeah, right, like that, so close. that's the best way to – because you're right. Like There is a lot of people out there that – uh, watch football and maybe aren't like you know tuned into what the Bills are doing, and they're like, "Oh, this Kirk Cousins guy seems like a really nice guy." Mm-hmm. Josh Allen, though, those his are, connection with the city is is better than any connection currently a quarterback to city. Those are people who are who are casual fans who know most of their NFL players based off insurance commercials. Right, right. So yeah, so they're like this Patrick Mahomes. No, Patrick Mahomes does he do insurance cur- commercials? Yeah, he does State Farm. Yeah, he does. Yeah, they're like yeah, we love Chris Paul and Patrick Mahomes yeah. and Aaron Rodgers. Um, okay, so we will finish talking about this game when this game goes final. Josh Allen just ripped another cannon down the down the sideline. Didn't incomplete, but I will I will update the final one. I it actually happens, w- this game I would has been sit so awesome. I would sit and just watch Josh Allen just. Throw balls. Yeah, there don't even need to be people on the field with him. It can just be him dropping back and just throw the ball seventy yards. Yeah, just on repeat. I would watch that. And listen, if you're a Packers fan and you're going through it right now, um, hit hit up your boy on Twitter. I've I've watched some bad Sunday night football games. I'm I'm here to you can cry on my shoulder because Rogers is crying to all the defense and his own. He no one likes him in this stadium. His entire team, the other team, all the fans. He's down bad. But let's get into some games. Let's recap every game. we got some great games to talk about. And, of course, we're going to start with the Lunder. Uh, ja- Broncos 21, Jaguars 17. I half-tuned into this game, and I'm very happy that I was half-tuning in. Like, I watched um, a portions, and then I would have to go do some stuff. And it felt like every time I tuned in, it was just an interception and people being upset uh, with either Trevor Lawrence or Russell Wilson. But... Russell Wilson does uh, get the job done with the big drive to win the game, and Trevor Lawrence is now back officially into the bus category. Yeah, in the words of Skip Bayless, we were wrong about being wrong about 
Trevor Lawrence. Correct. In other words, we were initially right. We should never have gotten off that take. Here's a fun little stat, courtesy of our good friend Uncle Chaps. Mm. Fun Jaguars stats of the week. Fun Jaguars stat of the week number one. The Jaguars are 0-11 when Trevor Lawrence throws an interception. Ooh. Any interception. Ooh. 0-11. Here's maybe the most vindicating stat for us, Big Cat. Trevor Lawrence has the worst winning percentage of all number one picks through mm. 25 games. Mm. Bust. That's tough. Bust. That's a bust. And he looks like the guy from The Dragon Show. Well, the craziest – yeah, he does. The craziest part about watching Trevor Fuckin Lawrence – Fucking Amon. Fuck, Fuckin is that Amon? Yeah. That's the dude where, like, when, when Trevor Lawrence – Showed up to to England. He should have seen that Russ's dragon was bigger, mm-hmm. and then just got the fuck off the island. Right? No, let's not, not let's quite. not spoiler okay. anyway. But the opposite. But that's all right. Also, okay. I've officially given up on watching the rest of this season because I heard it like some fucked up shit happened, and I heard that the next season's like three three years from now, twenty twenty four. I'll pick it up then. That's one of those ones I'll pick it up then because I'll forget everything by then. So might as well just watch yeah. it fresh. But Trevor Lawrence, there's just something about watching him play. It like. I don't know what he misses guys, very, like guys that are wide open. He misses easy throws. He had the pick. They they were screaming on the broadcast because the interception that sealed the game was he was intercepted by a guy with it with a cast on. Yeah, and they were like, he's got a fucking cast. Yeah, the on. dude yelled at him, remind him, yes. like you just got intercepted by Mega Man. Yeah, and he had the he had the terrible red zone interception where it was just like. His brain froze, and he's like, I'm just going to throw it and hope my guy catches it when his guy wasn't even close yeah. to being around. I've actually I've figured out that a, a good percentage of looking the part as a young quarterback involves how confidently you throw the ball away. Yeah. When you know that there's nothing that you can do, and you can you can throw the ball away so it's not intentional grounding, but make it look like you're doing it like with purpose. Yeah. Like fucking spike that ball into the ground at your receiver's feet. Peyton Manning was awesome at that. He yeah, was, just frustrated. Yeah, just a angry. frustrated like fucking drilling anthill. Yeah. With just a, a fire coming off your shoulder. There's other guys that do it kind of they they're unsure of themselves when they're getting rid of the ball. Like they're thinking through the rule book as they get rid of the pass. And those are the guys, it's like your incompletion, sometimes they it depends, like, how confidently you can throw an incompletion. That means more to me sometimes than how sweet your actual completion is. Yeah, look. yeah, and his he, his incompletions look terrible. His completions don't look good. He also, like, Travis Etienne was awesome. He now is the, the best draft pick they've had out of Clemson in 2021. Like, he, it was actually trading James Robinson. I love when this whenever this happens in the NFL where you trade one player – and it's like, oh, maybe now we can give all the carries to Travis Etienne. Oh, maybe you should have been giving him all the carries because he's fucking electric. Yeah, he's really And he good. kept you in this game. I love that, that Jaguars fans have discovered something weird about Travis Etienne's foot, too. Have you seen any of this? No. So they, they say that he has a duck foot on his right foot that might make him more susceptible to injury. Okay. But his foot naturally goes off to the side, which means like he can change directions going to his right faster than most guys can because his foot's at, like, an angle. That's So crazy. next time you watch him run, be on the lookout for Travis Etienne's duck foot. Yeah. That just angles out. I, I, I as, as far as the Jaguars, I'm just, I'm repulsed at myself. I need to, like, a Jaguars reminder, Jake, that you need to give us, like, whatever, whatever team that just historically stinks that shows flashes in the first three weeks of the season, just wait. Just give it some time. Yeah, because we're just back to the Jaguars stinking, and this is a really this is as down as you can be if you're a Jaguars fan because you have the guy that was supposed to be the next Peyton Manning the 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 surest like sure thing oh Josh Allen just threw an interception and now the Rugby. Packers are just throwing it backwards Rugby and now we might not cover the spread which would suck because then people are gonna get on me and that's gonna take away some of my joy uh, either way. Travis Trevor Lawrence I the being Packers plus ten and a half. Trevor Lawrence being bad is like as low as you can get for a Jag because you can suck, but when you have the number one overall pick and he's supposed to be a slam dunk, you know, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, all these guys, like you you can't miss, and then you might miss. Mm-hmm. That's as rock bottom as it gets. It's it's getting close to uh to DEFCON three time for Trevor Lawrence where he should consider cutting the hair. Mm-hmm. He had Urban as a coach last year, though. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I, does that look factor at in at all? But look at Uncle him now. Chaps addressed that in his post game uh, commentary, where he was shaving his head and he was like, "This is, you're we're we're fu-. He was, <laughs> he was he was buzzing yeah. his head. He's like, "You can't just keep saying he had. Ur- How long are we going to say he had Urban last year? He we're now into November. It's not like." Uh, and his receivers three weeks great. ago, you guys were like the Jaguars are fun. Like no, they, they were. Just, they did were you fun. not hear me? Just I put know. In a, 
I, I told Jake to put in a reminder. Okay, so sometimes we're I'm fucking just, dumb as shit on this show. Yeah. And when they played against the Jaguars or the, uh, the Chargers and the Chargers were missing, I don't know, like 77% of their defensive starters. Yeah, Justin Herbert could like suck his own dick because he lost all his ribs. They were playing against a preseason team and they, they looked good in that game. And so me and Big Cat got excited. I'm sorry. It felt fun to get excited about the Jaguars. There are certain things that, so we've been doing this show, what, six years now? We've, we've been able to experience a range of emotions about almost every single franchise that's out there. We've never been able to experience, b- besides the Blake Bortles run, but in recent memory, we haven't experienced the Jaguars being fun. So we naturally wanted to feel that we emotion. Wanted to be fun. And feelings are never wrong, Hank. It's just sometimes how yeah. you react to them that are wrong. So, and facts don't care about our feelings, and now we have some more facts that Trevor Lawrence might be a bust. And I will couch all this by saying there is still time, Hank. He still is on a bad team. I just – that was a gross game by him. That was a gross game by him. Yep. Like, watching that game was disgusting to watch, and he cost them a game that they easily could have won. I need to find out what Russell Wilson did on the flight back. I want to know if he was stretching, if he was getting treatment done on the way home, if he has any shame about the report that came out that he leaked. I need to know yeah. if he changed his uh, his flight behavior on the way back. Okay. I think we've actually gone to the limit of the Russell Wilson hate and not that like he's still just a terrible like personality. And every time he talks, I cringe and he did the let's ride coming off the field. He also did the pregame prayer where he's standing there and all the cameras are on him. And it's like, what are you doing? There was one moment where I was like, Hey guys, I think we've gone a little too far because this is pretty normal. He did the post game prayer circle that happens in every game. Uh, yeah, but did you see him? He was like, he was screaming. I know, but he, it, no, he was. There were people who were like, the hard. Jaguars are in that. Like no, Russell that, Wilson, do, like that makes that happens sense. every game. It makes complete sense, right? And I'm sure that Russell Wilson looks at himself as like the quarterback of the prayer circle, right? So he's like, I got this, guys, and then he closes his eyes and starts talking to r- the real Mister Unlimited, which is God. And he's closing his eyes and he's screaming. He was like, Packers just or Bills just picked off the Packers. He was sweating during his post game prayer where he was. He was just yelling at God. If I was God, I would actually be so mad that Russell Wilson gives me all the credit. Yeah. It's like, dude, you suck. Stop saying that I'm doing all this. Yeah. You're the one that stinks. Right, right. You're the one. I yeah, want you to be you're, better. You're the one that every every teammate is like, dude, get away from me. I'm just saying we... we I want Josh we, Allen to be crediting me yes, if I'm God. Yes, we do this all the time, though, and we're obviously absolutely guilty of it. But when you go so far where you pick apart everything... And then they're doing like completely normal things. I saw people roasting him for the prayer circle. And I was like, wait, that's a normal thing that every game has. So we got to be careful because otherwise we're going to tire ourselves out. of. Ru- and they won. Yeah. Like it, it does, as, as corny as he is, if he wins, it does change how you look at him. That's exactly what happened in Seattle for yeah, so long. It's right. like, okay, he's a winner. Let, you let win, Russ cook. Winning cures all. Do whatever. You can get away with anything in the NFL if you win football games. Let's let's talk real quick about the Broncos. They're now three and five going into the bye week. AFC is going to be tough to make the playoffs. They have the Titans, Raiders, Panthers, Chiefs coming up. I their defense is so good. Yeah. And they're probably not going to trade Bradley Chubb now. It's all, it's always crazy when you have these games. We'll get to another one with the Saints where it's like, well, if they lose this game, probably going to trade one of their best players. And if they win, they'll they'll keep going. And if you lose this game, your coach might be fired. Yeah, yeah. That, when was the last time we got a coach that was fired mid-season of their, their rookie year? I don't their think... first time ever coaching. Has that ever happened? Urban. Urban NFL, yeah, last oh, year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. yeah, that was that during last the season. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. was. Okay. Yeah, you, like it was like week thirteen or something. Yeah, that was. It was getting towards the end, but I I can't remember like this early. Eight, yeah. Week eight, it was actually in discussion that Nathaniel Hackett could be fired. Um, the only other thing I had from this game was Greg Dolcich is awesome, and he's their uh, their tight end, rookie tight end from UCLA. Fun name to say. Also, feels like he might be like the piece that because he's just tall. Which Russell Wilson needs to get just all tall guys mm-hmm. so he can see them. But yeah, I guess the Broncos like a little bit of a bounce up going into the bye week. This is great. I, I just wonder if you know how some teams they try to keep the guys around during the bye week, try to like get some extra reps in if they can. Russell Wilson's probably trying to recruit the guys. Hey guys, let's stick around. Yeah. Let's get some we're gonna listen, you can all come over to my house, we'll have like sleepovers and we'll work thirteen hour days. And they're all probably like, dude, fuck you, respectfully. Is he gonna I wouldn't be shocked if he flies to a World Series game just to be seen. 
You Feels like so? he always you always know, is in. Did you know maybe, that he, he, might he was be a court. baseball player at Big Cat? Yeah, that's true. So it might be that, or it could be courtside of the Lakers, which would be fun, just because the Lakers are never going to win. I yeah, hope they don't win tonight. What, what could what could Russ be doing this week? If there was uh, the NWSL just had their finals, right? I could see him going to like yeah. a women's soccer yep. game yep. and being like a WNBA game, yep. maybe. Yep, being front row. I could absolutely see that. So um, yeah, Broncos Jaguars. It was just the perfect London game because. It just sucked, mm -hmm. and it was even the like they scored and it was the under still hit, but the game just kind of sucked. I don't know how Roger Goodell thinks that, that England can house two franchises if we just keep exporting the Jaguars to them every year. It's crazy. I guess the NFL is just we're just king. Yeah, we are king. Um, all right, so we have the one p.m. slate, which was actually fantastic. We had some scoring was back, and we had some great games. Let's start with the most important game for this podcast, Patriots 22, Jets 17. Mr. INT is back in the building. Zach Wilson with three interceptions, all pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, who Actually, you know what? Hank, you won, so you get to start, and you can, you, can, you can steer us in whatever direction you want to go. It was a gross game. It was. Uh, Billy and I drove in together, and, and it just shows you know how far the mighty have fallen. I was driving in and I was like, Billy, I, I think the Patriots are gonna lose. Like I didn't feel I was nervous about you said that? I was nervous about playing the Jets. And then the game was gross. We still won, but I, I didn't really get a lot of joy out of it. And the Patriots are just kind of a, a gross, you know, middle tier team. Wow, yeah, this is very humble of you. It's emotionally mature. I just I, I can't I it's hard to get it it's is, hard to it's hard to care that much. It's just like I don't know how much of it's true because you were you were like narking to Big Cat that the Jets didn't post the final score. You were taking like they didn't. you were taking people, people were no were taking, people were like, DMing small, me to tell Big Cat so right, I was just you, I was the middleman. You there. were you were a little bit happy, and that that to me would be a red flag if you were like super happy about the Patriots beating the Jets. It was one of those things where I was like I was happy, but at what cost? Because I was nervous beforehand, and it just kind of put it all in reflect like in in reflection of like the fact that you were nervous about this before it just shows how mid the Patriots really are. Yeah. But you won the game. We won and the Mac game. And Mac Jones looked... I think we'll oh, come in second oh, in the division. What did Mac Jones look like? Okay? Mid-ish. Mid-ish? No sky cam oh, wires no. this week? Mid-ish. Yeah, but again, Bailey Zappi didn't look good either, so it's just, you know, we it are what we what are. It is what it is. Yeah, you are what you are. I, I still think we should, you know, we got to ride Mac out. There was okay. a great quote... It's his job to lose. ...by Ian Eagle during the game. I don't know if you guys caught this, but this was some next-level sabermetrics. Ian Eagle said 95% of games in the NFL are lost and not won. Mm. I did hear him say That's, that. Yeah. I, I did that, hear him say I that. I still don't know what the fuck he was talking about, but it makes sense. That's Trent Dilfer like, shit. I get, no, like, no. In this league. If, if Trent Dilfer is teaching yeah. like Algebra 2 yeah. with his you cannot win in the NFL and lose at the same time, this Ian Eagle quote, this is like calc. Wait, say it again. 95% of games in the NFL are lost and not won. Hmm. I think he's saying he's saying right there. Oh my God, Josh, that hit the ground, right? He just threw an interception. This game has gotten sloppy. This game has gotten sloppy. I hope that hit the ground. Uh, I think what he's saying there is Zach Wilson throwing three interceptions and the way he played today. The Jets' defense is very good. Yeah, that lost the Jets, in the game. Yeah, the Jets' defense kept them in that game. I just don't know if the 95% figure, if that holds up to scrutiny or not. This yeah. game, definitely. Yeah. I'd say that this game... Mr. INT INT the game away. Yes, he did. Billy, do you agree? Look, I'm just saying we just watched Josh Allen throw two interceptions. Yeah, that was that a bad were, pick. That was a bad that pick. That were both kind of in the same vein as uh, no, Zach no, Wilson. No. So Zach just, Wilson's interception is also twenty seven. I know they're up twenty seven. So you're saying that his misses look like Josh Allen's misses? Uh, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm gonna I'm gonna defend they're Zach Wilson. A bit older, okay, but it's, gonna be, it's gonna be hard. Okay, but uh, look. He threw for more than any other Jets quarterback has against the Patriots in the Belichick era. 355 yards. Talk. This is loser talk. Two touchdowns. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Jake just clapped. <laughs> this is Billy. Like, what kind of stat is I that know, Billy. This is loser talk. I got more stats. Billy, on this is I got loser. more stats. Wait, if that's <laughs> the one you lead with, that's <laughs> no, loser no. talk. He went 20. You lost. He, he, he had to throw the ball away 15 times, and that reflects uh -huh. in his – in his <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> that reflects in his completion percentage. He's yeah. 20 for 41, but he threw it 15 times away. And then, you know, that takes us to okay. but, but here's the thing 20 is, of 29, you, you remember three what picks. I, what I said about Trevor Lawrence earlier? Zach Wilson has maybe 
the the worst throwaways of any quarterback. So this is what I'm getting to. This is what I'm he's, getting he's to. He's the worst. He when, is the when younger. When, when he has to intentionally miss a pass, most of the time he'll just throw an interception. He'll be like, right, fuck but it. He yeah, looks, let him cook. Let him cook. He yeah. looks great. Like, the thing is, when he's looking great, he looks awesome. But then he does this. The That's way he's scrambling. Yeah. The way 95% he's of the time when he looks good, he I'm looks just saying, awesome. when yeah. you have to throw the ball away <laughs> that many times, one yeah. time it's not going to go well. You know? Like, mm-hmm. just what percentage. About the other two? Well, yeah, the other two. The percentage of, like, There's three. miss rate. What happens on the others? Well, well, one was an arm punt. Let me read a No, that a, a wasn't. Quote. Let me that read wasn't a quote. an arm punt. Wait, wait, the like 14 yard out that he threw to the sideline that got picked off? Yeah, that wasn't an arm yeah, punt. Yeah, that's the no, worst. That that's close. an arm well, shank. I'm just so basically, this is a quote from Zach. So I think this might, you know, this is actually hopeful because now that we hear how he's thinking about it, uh-huh. every time I get out of the pocket, it just gets frustrating to throw the ball away, said Wilson, who completed only 20 of 41 passes. That's what I've done for the last four weeks to put us in a good position to not turn the ball over and for us to win. So I need to keep doing that when something is not here. It gets old and getting out and not seeing anything there. So he's basically, he's well, basically throwing the ball recklessly because he's getting bored of throwing the ball away. Yes. But one of which them, is something. One of them was, like, there was an open guy. Certainly. One of them, Mims was one of them there. He, was, he was getting pressure in the pocket and he was trying to make a play, something that, like, a type of interception Josh Allen just did. Yeah. Okay. Is that, th- okay. like. No, I'd, I'd say this is more like you're going down a path of Jameis without all the upside right now. He's, he, well, is, he, reminds me, he reminds me of a younger Carson Wentz. I'm not saying a young Carson Wentz who is an MVP. I'm saying a younger Carson Wentz who it feels like every time he's like, I'm going to make a play, I'm going to spin, I'm going to throw it, and then his throws, sometimes he's throwing the ball into like, he threw, that one of those interceptions was into like four different Patriots that was like, he just is hoping, similar to Trevor Lawrence, like, I hope this works out. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, the quarterback play is the weakest part of the team right now. I was talking to Hank earlier, I was like, look, I think the Jets are a good enough team to beat the Patriots, it's just I think we're going to see today that uh, Zach Wilson with more pressure with Brees Hall out and uh, uh, injuries on the offensive line that he's going to really have to play to win. And with that, we saw him try to play to win. In the past, he had the support of a better offensive line and Brees Hall. And now, you know, like the curtain's been pulled out. He wasn't defended by the whole offensive system, and we're seeing what's happening. But to that, if that Max Jones pick six... Didn't that did back. suck. That it, did suck. It would have been a totally different game. Mm-hmm. It did suck for if, you. We should been, say that. The game could have been 17-3 going into the half, and we would have been playing a much different style of football. But what happened was that didn't happen. Our defense wins championships, so it's not that crazy to depend on a defense de- to win you games. Yeah. Just saying. Does defense win championships, though? Defense wins championships. I, it's a very cool thing to say, and I, I've I've said it myself because but, but it's... That's just facts. I'd say quarterbacks usually. I, quarterbacks, really I'd say, good like, quarterbacks. I'm going to have to dig into the list of quarterbacks that have won uh, Super Bowls recently, but I, I'm pretty sure it's, like, the best quarterbacks in the league. I'm typically no, when the no, Super I'm goes. I'm a I'm a you know I'm old fashioned defense wins championship. Okay. So right, it's not right. crazy. So where are you at now defense. with the Jets? Because it does feel um it feels like that, you know, the Patriots are, are probably the weakest they've been in a very long time and they still beat you. Um this is kind of why we push back when you were like, I feel yeah, bad watching no. you guys and it, we're like, dude, we're all me, we're the same, all right. of us here. On this side of the table. But it was still a pretty competitive game. It wasn't like... Okay. You know, it wasn't a dumpster That's, fire. Yeah, clap that up. Good it wasn't a up. dumpster fire. But look, I would see... Look, yeah, in two bro. weeks, they're going to play again. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, they could, they can win in two I weeks. I like that. I like that, Bill. Yeah. Like, keep talking to yourself They back. played I like the first it. Yeah. time. Don't back down. Like, Sometimes me and Big Cat, what we do play is... the game. We, we, try to, we try to beat you down yeah. a little bit, Billy. And, and no, look, I'm not, I'm not beating him down. I am. I'm trying to. No, I mean, going into, like, last week, I knew setting up, you know, Sam Ellinger was going to start. Jets were going to have a big test. I knew I, I might be in this deep place, so I'm just I'm trying not to stay trying positive. To, I'm not trying to beat you down at all. I'm just asking you a question of, like, where are you, where are you mentally because, as o- often is the case with our franchises, they're not – when they have to step up, and there's still a lot of season left, and the Jets still have a winning record, but when they have to step up in those big moments, like we said, these next three games we're going to be – if you go 2-1, and one, Jets are for real, for real, and it, st- it started poorly. The thing is, all of his interceptions are caused by his uh, certain play style. And because of that, and because they're so ridiculous, it's almost like, well, you know, you'll clean that up. 
like that will go away. And that's the hopeful part of it. Like if he was throwing inaccurate passes that, you know, were getting straight, well, they sometimes are straight to the defender, but like, yeah. like missing on crosses, like missing throws instead of just doing stupid throws. Like you can cut out the stupid throws. Like he even said he's getting fr- like bored of throwing the ball away. He wants to make a play. You know what, motherfucker? Just fucking throw the ball away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't don't get coy with it. Don't get like cute. It's okay. He's to- basically, he's getting too cute with it, and it's fucking up. You know, turning the ball over, and drives are getting stopped. He's trying to extend plays, and it's you know not always working. But sometimes it does. It's okay to be boring. I think. Yeah. Basically, the one thing. If he's going to scramble, stop scrambling backwards. Yes. Start scrambling he does, forwards. He's play, he scrambles uh, like I play Madden where I just yeah. run backwards 15 yards and hope someone gets open. And You're absolutely right on that. He's got to start scrambling forwards and maybe Packers pick up cover. the three yards damn it. instead of you know getting into those wacky situations where he ends up throwing these weird picks. I've noticed that, it, that his spin moves a lot of times take him back. He's got to yeah. learn to do a spin move yeah. and go either lateral or like forward with if, it a little bit. But when he spins out of the grasp, he ends up usually drifting back five yards. If I was his quarterback coach and, you know, from my limited exp- experience and probably, you know, people probably disagree with me. If I'm him, you do the spin move. You get one more look at the field. If you can't see anything, no more extending the play and going to that back. Like he goes towards the sideline, even farther back into that little pocket place where sometimes he does get good plays. But if that first look, you don't get it, start running towards the line of scrimmage. Try yes. to see if you can pick up yards. If you're going to get fucked, throw mm-hmm. it away. You know who he should take a lesson from is uh, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is awesome at throwing the ball out of bounds. Yeah. He's really he good at it. it. He fires the fucking yeah. pigskin yeah. out of bounds like Johnny Moxon. Now, um, Billy, I had it. Uh, I had two stats that I'm just going to throw out there, and it, we're not trying to knock you down, but um, it's been 2,499 days since the Jets beat the Patriots, and the last time that happened, part of my take was still three months away from the first episode, oh, and great. Billy was a junior in high school. Yeah, but know, yeah, but Big Cat, when was the last time the Bears beat the Patriots? Oh, shit. That was six, I was six days ago. Oh, okay. I was a junior in high school, and I was actually at that game. Oh, I think I was. You should have gone today. It would have been different. I know. I know. Billy actually did mutter that. He's like, if I had been there, it would have been different. Well, you know, I was. I was <laughs> you also blame me on on not being able to go. I. Which I it was one of those things. Was, where I don't understand. If you had, if you had came, it would have been better. Like you know, you should have come. I could have like for Billy. I could have said that. So you like, both could have work come. thing. <laughs> I, like, I could have. If one person comes, it. it doesn't work. You know that. <laughs> I I remember because I won my Packers game on Saturday. God damn it! In high school, threw for like. Four touchdowns, 350 yards. Then the next <laughs> day, That's went to the sick, Jets game sick. and yeah. saw them win. It was sick. So sick. maybe it's because Very you're not sick. playing anymore that no, the Jets stopped no, winning. No. Yeah. Because they lost. Either way, uh, I, I'm actually a little surprised with Hank. You you seem very humble and, and resigned to the fact that the Patriots might not be that good. But doesn't it feel good that you still beat Billy? Yeah, but like I said, it was like the fact that we were even talking, you know, on the way in. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I, I now know moment. what it feels like to be a team in the AFC East or the NFC North for the past, you know, 20 years or whatever, where it's like there's one yeah. team in the division that's significantly better and you're just kind of fighting for scraps. You now, know what you got to you got to Like just, watching this Bills game. Yeah, I was going to say. It doesn't was, matter what happens to the gonna, Patriots. That was going to be my last question. We play them in the playoffs again. It's going to be the exact same thing. You have thing. to be careful that you don't get to a point where Jets fans can say, rent free, bro. Yeah. After you beat them, you know, like right now, Jets fans know better because they're like, yes, obviously the Patriots, like the last time that we won a game against you guys, Billy was still good at football. So they know how long of an era that's been. All state. But once you get to a place where they can they can accuse you of, oh, man, you're you're so triggered at us because you think about us all the time. That's what you need to avoid at all costs. Yes. Yes. The Jets beat the Patriots December 27th, 2015. Oh, no. Oh, I was just looking that up. Shit. So how, what was your game like it, that weekend? It, I, I think I got that mixed up. I remember going to a Jet game. The Patriots won that one. But when did they play? October 25th. When did they play earlier in that season? October 25th. That's when? The Patriots beat the Jets 30-23. to 23. But what about when they played at home? The Jets beat the Patriots December 27th. Shit. Okay, probably got that wrong. That's okay. That's okay. But I still would have won if we went out that game. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. If you yeah. had a game December 26th. Um, okay, next up, uh, also, Hank, just a point of clarification. We're going to get to the Dolphins, but you keep do you keep saying we're the sec- you're the second best team in the in the AFC East. Yeah, you're, well, you're, when, you're when it's you're all when, when the, the dust state. settles. Okay, all when right, the dust all right, settles. All right. Um, all right, next up, Vikings thirty four, Cardinals twenty six. 
Uh, I guess I have to say now, I had this circled on Friday's show as this is the game that the Vikings will be proven to be frauds. I was wrong. The Vikings won this game. Kirk Cousins looked good. Kirk Cousins had a run for a touchdown where he reached 18 miles per hour, which is crazy. Uh, and Kyler is still the most frustrating guy to watch. I um, I still think they're frauds. I do I think too, frauds PFT, because, but No, I really, really think they're frauds. PFT. This is maybe the worst 6-1 and one team of all time. Okay, I, 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 I agree with you. It, and I have a stat to back it up. Okay, all right. Ready? Yeah. Their quarterback is Kirk Cousins. That's true. That's a fact. So I, I agree with you, and I'm going to stick with it, but I'm saying I have to at least eat a little bit of shit when I picked the Cardinals, I bet on the Cardinals. I said, this is a game the Vikings look like frauds, and they come out and win. Now, I could also say that the Cardinals could have won that game if uh, uh, who Dorch didn't fucking muff the punt when they were getting the ball back down two in the fourth quarter. That sucked. They also could have won the game if Kyler Murray didn't just throw the ball up a couple times for an easy interception. That also sucked. Now, here's something. But I have to eat some crow. Well, I'll, I'll eat crow whenever I'm hungry. I'm not hungry right now. If you beat a fraud... Doesn't that make you a greater fraud too? Like if it's catch me if you can, like a really really good fraud would know all the tricks that other True. frauds do. True. The Cardinals, they're fucking frauds. Well, I don't even think they're frauds because they stink. But they I were think good. Just bad. But remember, they were like eight and what were they? Eight and one, eight and zero. Yeah, last, last year? year. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they're I, not. This year, they're not. Good. I still, I still count the Cardinals as like bad frauds. They're like med- medium talented frauds. Yeah. The Vikings are the fucking Frank Abagnale. Of frauds. Okay, I, listen, I'll, I'm, I'm about to catch you. You're, you're, you're boosting me back up. I'll stick with it. I just know that I, I was wrong on this game. And you do have to play them next week. They play at the Commanders. So Fuck. That would be nice if you could prove it. All right, this is my, this is yeah. my, this yeah, is my pers- catch me if you can yeah, moment. Yeah, your personal fraud I'm, game. I'm Tom Hanks in this situation. Yeah, and it would be nice. Is the game at, it's probably at 1 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock, so, so you yeah. just got to do it. You got to do it. You got to go out there and win that game. You gotta go out there and win that game. I can do it. Catch I can do these it. Frauds. I can do it. And it, you listen, if they if they beat the Commanders at home next week, uh, I will. I'll take my foot off the gas calling them frauds. But I just I I told Jake to set a reminder in the calendar to not believe Kirk Cousins. Don't believe his lies. Like it's memento where you're leaving yourself notes for the future. I've been trying. I've been fighting myself tooth and nail to keep myself from buying into the Vikings. Because, I know. Yes, Kirk Cousins. He charmed me with his Midwestern nice ways. But he's also played very, very well. So I will give him credit. Like, Kirk Cousins has played awesome this year. Right. The Vikings have played awesome this year. I still don't believe it. No, I, I agree with you. Like, I'm not – and I, I would say most Vikings fans deep down probably think the same thing. Although there is that feeling going on in the NFC right now. Besides, you know, maybe the Eagles and the Cowboys, there's not a lot of teams that have looked incredible. Right. So it feels gettable. It feels like, oh, you know, you could maybe win one game and get in the Super Bowl here because there's not a ton of – great teams out there but uh i will give them credit for this game because i I thought they were going to lose it and the cardinals found every way every which way to lose it deandre hopkins back is like that that that's a one nice thing is that we expected the cardinals to look different when deandre hopkins is back they do kyler murray had a a crazy day minus the two interceptions but he also had the first which i assume is going to be a long line of insult dances at his expense patrick peterson did um, some, I think it was some Call of Duty moves, some video game moves. He's pretending to I play video Fortnite games. Fortnite thing, yeah. He's got a video game problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and then af- afterwards, he was asked about it, and he said, I think it's called Call of Duty. I'm not much of a gamer. Heard it just came out. So I like that. <laughs> I like that we're now in the people are just going to start making fun of Kyler Murray when he fucks up. Yeah, he's doing he's doing the meme where the stick figure walks into the room, and yeah. he sees Kyler playing video games. Hey, son, are you losing? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And they were. It's funny. Yeah, that, that, and they that, did. That's, that's very funny by Justin Jefferson. Yes. Or no, uh, Patrick Peterson. Patrick Peterson. Yes. Did. So uh, I I think that the, the Vikings are a perfectly fine, nice team. They're enjoyable. They do a lot of things right. They're fun offensively at times. It's just a matter of we can do a visualization exercise. Just imagine it's the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the Green Bay Packers are playing against – the Minnesota Vikings. The mm. Packers get a wild card spot. The Packers stink. But the well, Packers get a wild card spot. As bad as the Packers have looked at times this year, and as good as the Vikings have looked, I would still bet on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in that game. I, I like to I like that visual, visualization. I like to instead visualize uh, Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings in their road. Uh, they're, they're wearing road whites and uh, very purple. 
and they're going into uh, Lincoln Financial, and there's 85,000 Batgirls screaming said in their face. Um, that is a absolute ass kicking. That would be an ass. That's kicking. a shit pump. Or if they go, if they go to San Francisco, yeah, and just get their teeth run. Okay, this is good. Throat. Yeah, or or they go to Dallas, and Micah yeah. Parsons is sitting there being like, "My cousins, Micah, I'm going to bend you in half." Micah snaps him. He yeah. hits him in his spine, and Kirk Cousins' head pops off. Yeah, I'm I'm going to absolutely punish you, and then we get to watch. Like that. I I can go through any list of teams. Yeah, you're that, right. that are likely to make the playoffs in the NFC, with the exception of. Of maybe the Falcons. I feel like the Vikings could beat the Falcons. Yeah. The or playoffs. the Panthers if they get or in. The or the Saints if they get yeah, in. Pan- or, or, or the, the Bucks, Bucks if they yeah, get in. Yeah. Right. They, could, they will beat whatever team from the NFC South. I'd agree. I'd agree in. with that. So that's nice. We so said they have nice that. about the Vikings. They have that. But, but every other team that I can envision in the playoffs right now would perform some level of torture on Kirk Cousins. Yes. So 6-1, uh, and one, though. Nothing to see. Can't, can't apologize if you're a Vikings fan. 6-1 and one is 6-1. and one. Um, They do have, I think... So they play the Commanders. Then they have – we'll get the, the fraud test when they play at the Bills and versus the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. That will be that will be a nice test of, okay, let's see. Like, if they go one and one in those, I might have to rethink my whole fraud thing. I might. I'm so dug in at this point that I think even when I know that I'm wrong, I have to – I have to keep doubling down like in blackjack yeah. until I'm eventually right about them. I like to give I like to give teams an out. Like if you can do this, I'm giving you the challenge. If you can do this, if you can go one and one against the Bills and the Cowboys, I will I will rescind my fraud label. If Kirk Cousins can win a Super Bowl and get Super Bowl MVP yeah. in that game, I will yeah, still frauds. Fraudulent uh, Super Bowl. Uh, bubble who, who bubble are, championship. Who are they playing? Yeah. Uh they the The Ravens. Oh, if they beat the Ravens? No, no, because the Ravens will probably be injured by then. They'll have like a, a shitload of injuries. Absolutely. No, that's fraudulent. If they beat the Bills. Yeah, in the Super Bowl. Or the maybe the Chiefs. I'll crown them. Maybe the I Chiefs. I will officially crown if them. If they beat the Bills in the Super Bowl, Kirk Cousins doesn't even have to get MVP. Yeah. I will say he's no longer fraud. If they beat the Chiefs, I need him to get MVP. Yes. In order to take that label. Okay, off. those are these are all fair demands by us. Um, yeah, and the Cardinals suck. I'm I'm sick of the Cardinals shit. They're in my sick of, sick sick of their shit tier in my power rankings to come out on Tuesday. I'm just I I'm sick of like thinking that they might be explosive and fun, and then I watch the games, and I just get bummed out. And I know they had some like it was a fun game to watch. It was back and forth. There was some drama points, all those things, but I'm just sick of their shit. In terms of teams that bum you out, I'd, I'd say the Cardinals are definitely up there with both the Jaguars and the Broncos, really. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Just bummer, bummer yeah. organizations. Just bum. Just just big-time bummers. Um, okay, before we get to the next game, let's do a quick ad. I think it's from Coors Light. I love Coors Light. I was drinking a Coors Light on Friday. I, was, I actually got stuck on a train for about an hour and a half. The train didn't move. Coming back to New York on Saturday, guess what I did to pass the time? Coors Light. Coors Light. Hell yes. Our weeks are filled with deadlines, responsibilities, and just stress in general, but it's college football season, and when the weekend hits, you got to protect your chill. So this season, make time to chill out and catch the game at your favorite bar, and while you're at it, order an ice-cold Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill. Protect your chill this season with Coors Light. Coors Light is the beer of college football. Whether your team is a powerhouse with a record to keep or an underdog with a point to prove, one thing's for sure, it's going to be a hell of a season. Stay refreshed throughout all the action with Coors Light because no matter how your team fares after the clock runs out, a Coors Light in your hand means you're winning every time. Protect your chill this season with Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. I want people to order their Coors Light online from the Coors Light website and then send us a screenshot of it. Get it delivered straight to your door. You just go to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly, Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Um, this game, by the way, is so it's twenty seven seventeen with three thirty left. It looks like the Bills are just gonna try to run out the clock. It's crazy chippy. Like these teams, they, they have no reason to hate each other, and it's been personal fouls left and right. We got a, we we saw a coach get pushed. It's kind of fun. They, I, I don't know why why it's been so chippy. I've wondered what the uh, what the Bills are going to do, and here we have Stefan Diggs getting into a fight. Yeah, this is they're showing the clips and, right now, and everybody loves Stefan Diggs. Right. I don't I don't know why they're fighting him, um, but I've been wondering about the Bills since they're so good and they're just decimating everybody. How are they able to keep like keep the their edge, foot on the gas? The edge. And I think their foot on the gas technique is just they go into every game. Wanting to kill the other team. Yeah. Like, actually kill them. Yeah. Which is good, I think. Look, it, they're just screaming at each other yeah. right now. We've had basically a pause in the game because they're all yelling at each other. 
Billy. I don't think they want to kill them. I think they want to clown them. Yeah. I think like Josh Allen laughing at the other defense. They want to humiliate. The it's other like team. they they get mad if they're not able to clown you. Yeah. yeah. It's like John Wayne Gacy style. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I would have preferred if Josh Allen hadn't thrown that interception on the goal line. Um. So the clowning actually did happen. But this is still a a decent result for me. Also, I went to the game in 2013. I was a freshman. Ah, oh, God. damn. damn. That. Okay, great. All right, next up, Dolphins-Lions. Jake, Dolphins 31, Lions 27. Tua is really good. Still undefeated with Tua on the field playing a full football game. I know mm-hmm. he. I know people show the underthrown passes, but he was crazy efficient today. The offense was crazy efficient. They were 9 for 13 on third and fourth downs. They were 3 for 3 in the red zone. I, I mean, he's just... He's good. They win. They play. This offense can football. hang with anyone. Yeah, they beat Buffalo. Like they, I'm not scared of a track meet in Buffalo. Ooh, like, I like that. They, they, they can do in it in the winter time. You think yeah. snow on the ground? I like I think that. They talk. Do play in December, but yeah, it's a like, good. They could hang. It's a good mentality to have, and I think that like offensively, yeah, you guys. The nice thing about having Waddle and Tyreek Hill is even if you do underthrow them by five yards, they're athletic enough. to Yeah, and they were them. probably yeah. open by ten yards to begin with. Right. So that's fine. Dolphins that they can are come at Buffalo to. December eighteenth. Oh, that's gonna that's be candy ass uniform that's time. Cold. Tyreek yeah. is just absolutely insane. He's um he had twelve catches for one hundred and eighty eight yards today. He's now on pace. I know that 17 games changes a lot of these things, but he is on pace to beat Calvin Johnson's record of uh, 1,964 yards. And he is – so the rest – so Tyreek now has four games, 160-plus yards this season. The rest of the NFL combined has four games, 160-plus yards by a single receiver. And I think in in those four games, he's already tied, like, the Dolphins' yeah. all-time record yeah. for um, number of 160-yard games by yes. their own wide receivers. Yes. He's on pace to set the all-time record, as you mentioned. He's on pace for 2,042 yards. It's right crazy. Now. So we got to figure out what the equation would be for, for, him, for him to count that as, like, the single season, no question about it, better season than Calvin Johnson. Yeah. I would say – if he can get to 2000 2075 yards i would count that yeah he's got to get he's got to get like 150 yards more no doubter yeah uh-huh. yeah he has to he has to really like put a stamp on that because that calvin johnson season was incredible yeah so but he tyreek hill's just out of his mind right now and it feels like every he didn't even score a touchdown and he was just every every single time they needed a big play uh every big pass oh josh allen and he over ooh that was a bad pass okay that was a bad pass. Fourth that was down. a bad pass by Josh Allen. I'm going to say it right now. Um, they're, the good news for Detroit is uh, Dan Campbell, after the game, said they're close. Mm. He said, we're close, guys. We're mm. real close. i got to get this figured out. And, man, I'm going to do whatever it takes. i got to get this thing figured out and turned around. I don't know what, I'm, what I have to do, but I'll do it. The Lions were back for a half. Oh, when they they jumped out to a 14 nothing lead? Yeah. They were- and it, but it felt, to me at least, like it was – the definition of a zero zero ball game at yeah. that point. Like that did not feel like a lead that the Lions could hold off against the Dolphins. No, and they and, and the Dolphins came out and I guess this is a, a testament, like if you can score twenty seven points in the first half, um, that's nice because then people won't realize you scored zero points in the second half. Yeah, I I actually didn't realize that. Till right now, right. Because uh-huh. you're like, oh yeah, they had I know they didn't score a lot in the second no, they scored zero points in the second half. The Dolphins were able to just figure out how to beat them uh defensively and stop them. Uh, so yeah, it was it was uh, tough to, to to watch the Lions like be back for a hot second, and then the Dolphins do did what they have been able to do when Tua is healthy and run all over them. So congrats, Jake. Yeah, they're alive, and they have the Bears, the Browns, a bye, and the Texans. Mm. That's pretty good. Mm. I have a blind resume for you. Um, quarterback A, sixty five percent. Uh, completion percentage on the year, 12 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, 2,000 yards, 7 games played. Okay, I like that. Quarterback B, 70% completion percentage, 12 touchdowns, 3 interceptions, 1,678 yards on 5 games played. Oh, wow. Quarterback B sounds really good. Mm, that's Justin Herbert and Tua. Tua's having a better year than Justin Herbert right now. Yeah. He After is the last one that gets year, compared to. like, oh, no, did they pick the wrong yeah. quarterback? Is but it, it is, out so far this year. Yeah, it is funny that, like, uh, Joe Burrow doesn't – I feel like Joe Burrow, because he's been to the Super Bowl and everyone loves Joe Burrow, he doesn't really get talked about with those two guys. It just becomes a Tua versus Justin Herbert debate. 
Yeah, because it's and it, they were the yeah they were obviously picked back to back. It's the eyeball test too. Right. It's like Joe Burrow. Okay, yeah, no question, he's better than Herbert right now. Although there there is like a corner of the internet that is in love with Justin Herbert. Oh, like, I think Justin Herbert's you know, very good. I think I think he's I very just, good too. But they they think that like they would take him top three. He, there there are way more people that shit on Tua and love Justin Herbert. When my point is not like oh one's significantly better than the other. They're pretty close and. You shouldn't shit on either of them because they're both pretty good quarterbacks. I would love to have any of the three. Yeah. Please. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Um, yeah, so the the Dolphins, they're kind of back, right, Jake? Feeling good? Yeah, and I think if Tua didn't, obviously, big if, but if he didn't get hurt, like they would be at the top of the AFC right Ooh. now. I like that. Yeah. There's no reason. It would be the Jets. There, it's impossible that to That would have been the that. only game. I mean, versus Minnesota, they could have definitely won that game. And at the Jets, the Jets played really well that game, not taking away anything anything from them but yeah like after three weeks you guys not you guys the whole world was talking about them possibly being the best team when do you play the jets again uh last the last rivalries. week last June week eight, uh week 18 and rivalries. that's going to be that's going to be in miami, miami that yeah time. i mean built bulletin board material with the whole oh yeah. fans making the mm-hmm. the two mm-hmm. of fingers yeah mm-hmm. that's gonna be this. a big time revenge game big for time revenge yeah. game i've yeah. never seen jake so so upset about the fact that we'll that not forget it. New York football fans were insulting to his injury. Yes, yes. crazy. Um, okay, next up, uh, Cowboys forty nine, Bears twenty nine, craziest. Uh, I would say like total of the day. You didn't think this game was going to no. be this many points. Um, yeah, the Bears got absolutely gashed defensively. The Cowboys came out four touchdown drives to start the game. It was as easy as it could ever be. They ran uh, six point nine yards per rush. On the day. It's That's pretty, bad. It's bad. That's really bad. Uh, shout out Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard yeah, was electric. Welcome, welcome to the Tony Pollard uh, bandwagon. As we've been saying, like, I'm no I'm no expert. I don't watch film for a living. I watch football on TV for a living. Yeah. But when I watch Tony Pollard run with the football, to me, he seems just about as good as Ezekiel Elliott. Yes. It's not, like, exactly as good as yes. Ezekiel Elliott. Yes. Keep giving him the ball. He's hungry right now. Um. Feed the guy. Yeah. He's fucking good. He's electric. Yeah. And uh, all right. So this is going to sound like loser talk, but I'm just going to say it anyway. That was I can't be mad about that game. Like people were like, oh, you got clown today. The Bears defense was terrible. They they can't tackle in the orange helmets. I'm convinced of this. This is just that's manalytics. Well, they they look like traffic cones they, or practice cones, which they, like if you if you grow up playing football. They put orange things on the field. Yeah. You spend your entire life learning how to dance around the orange it, things. It, it's it's a terrible look. Um, but Justin Fields has looked great. Now outside of I would I would prefer I'll say this, I'll pr- I would prefer my quarterback when there's a turnover to not jump over the guy who get, who gets the ball than letting him score a touchdown. That was a bad look. Micah Parsons recovering a fumble and then Justin Fields avoiding touching him while he's on the ground and then having Michael Parsons pop up and score a touchdown. We got to clean that up in terms of the actual quarterbacking mm-hmm. play. He's looking so much better than he looked at the beginning of the yeah, season. He, the offense is fun. And I think I was actually going to ask you as the only question I had about this game, is this maybe the perfect way for this yes. game to turn out for you? Yes. Where your defense, which you know is sus to begin yes. with just trade Robert Quinn. You got, you got rid of your captain. Yeah. And so it, you know that you stink on defense uh, you lose the game, which you'd probably prefer to lose ultimately if you're yes. going to be looking at draft Yes, picks. You want to lose the game. Your defense looks bad. Your offense still looks like it's making improvements on where it's been in the past. That, to me, seems like a win-win for you. It's essentially how, – how I break it down is if if the Bears lose and Justin Fields is making uh, – st- taking steps forward, I can live with that all season long because the Bears are not a very good team. Their roster is not very good. I know that they're not going to be a playoff team. So all I care about is Justin Fields. Now, if it's a loss where like the 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 Bears have a chance to win the game late, like their loss against the Vikings when uh whatever his name is, Emmett Smith or whatever, fumbled, right? Justin Fields having a chance to win games with late game drives, I don't want to rob him of that. Like you know what I mean? Like if there's mm-hmm. that opportunity where he yeah. can go prove something, I want that. I want them to win that game. Same thing happened with the Giants. They Velas Jones muffed a punt when they're down eight to get the ball back with like two minutes left. That was a robbed opportunity of Justin Fields trying to win a game. But this game, he looked good. The defense looked bad. Better draft pick. There's no there. It, it really does not affect me because I don't know what it is. What he what is clicked in his head, but. 
the way he's throwing the sidearms. Uh, yeah, like the, the, he's, the launch angles are different now, he's, too. He's getting the ball out. He's going through his reads. Some of the, the play calling, the designed runs, like, hey, this guy's a freak athlete. Maybe we should run the ball with him. Yeah. It's all starting to, to feel like it's coming together, and I'm excited. I I'm, think, like, very, very excited. I think the ultimate end-of-the-game scenario for you would be if they were down by six points, Justin Fields takes them on a touchdown drive. You guys score touchdown, game's tied. Yeah. Your kicker goes out there and misses the extra yeah. point. And then you kick off to them in overtime. They drive down and score. Yeah. So Justin Fields had a game-winning drive. Yes, right. But the rest of the team let him down. You end up losing the game anyways. The only note I have for Justin Fields is I would like to see him smile occasionally. Yeah. I don't think I've ever I seen th- him actually happy. I think he just wants to win very, very badly. With, I think is, he's one of those guys. But even against, against the, the Patriots. Slide, week one. He yeah, so that's true. That's yeah, true. but that yes. was a win. I don't. He, he. I actually prefer the way that like he doesn't. Even if he plays well and he the team loses, he's upset. Yeah, I just, like that. Just smile more, baby. I like that. So yeah, I I'm very happy. I I don't want to get ahead of myself, um, but I'm just gonna throw it out there. 2021 draft class, first round: Trevor Lawrence, mm-hmm. Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones. Which guy right this second is playing the best football? Who won today? Mac, Which guy right Mac this Jones second did? is playing the best football? That's all I'm asking. I, I, I probably have to go with Mac then. I'm going to go. Uh, with, just, okay. just recency all right, bias. All right, all right. All right. That's fine. That's fine. I, I was just asking the question. I wasn't even giving my opinion. I'm going to go Trey Lance. Okay. Okay. Trey Lance looked good until he got hurt. I'm just asking the question because it, the last few, like, last oh. about like three weeks, Justin Fields, there has been there have been a lot of promising things. Davis that, Mills. Yeah, Davis Mills. Um, I just, oh man, they're just starting to realize, like, hey, this guy is such a good athlete. Let's run him. Like they even said it. They admitted it after the Patriots game that they took some plays from the Baltimore Ravens playbook. It's yeah. like no fucking shit. Why didn't we do this? I would be. Concer- say, I would be concerned that it took this long I, to figure that out. I'm gonna say something really crazy. If Matt Nagy was smart enough and he had run Justin Fields like they're doing the last few few games, he'd probably still have a job. Yeah, like it's. I don't know why sometimes coaches like can't figure out. Hey, this is what his skill set is. Let's let's adapt it to him. I get the instead vibe of doing the opposite. I get the vibe that Matt Nagy didn't want Justin no, Fields. No, no, so, so it was like a big. He was like throwing a hissy fit doing a protest. He's right. like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run the offense. You want me to run right, this guy? Right. Right. So I yeah I'm very happy. Uh, the Cowboys look great. I I can't I I, I their defense kind of got gashed too because we ran for we've run for over 200 yards in three straight games. Uh, but the Cal Dak looked good. Tony Pollard looked great with with no Zeke. I just yeah, I'm walking away from this game and I can't I can't be that bummed out. I know that probably some people are like want me to be ooh you know mm-hmm. you know doom and gloom. This sucks. I'm I'm being as honest as I can be. So on the, on I'm a happy guy right now. On the other side of of the football, Dallas Cowboys. What is what is like success this year for Mike McCarthy to the point where he won't get fired? Oh, that part sucked. By the way, Mike McCarthy laughing in the Bears' face because yeah. he's just so fat. And yeah. Gross. So, but what what's what's good for him? Like, I don't I don't think he necessarily would completely save his job just by making the playoffs. I think he needs to get. I think he needs to get one. To, I was gonna say he thinks. I think he needs to get the NFC Championship game. You're probably right. I think he needs to get the NFC Championship game because yeah. Because you're expected to win, although he would be on the road both games cause if the Eagles win the NFC East. Yeah. And the kick goes out. Uh, so I w- the Bills I w- win by 10. So whoever got 10, great. Whoever got 10 and a half, PFT, congrats. Thank you. Um, I still was happy. I, I did win the Bills first half. I wish they had just, you know, Josh Allen shouldn't have thrown that interception at the end. That's all. I, I think it for the Cowboys it comes down to how they lose in the playoffs. Right. I think that they could make it to the NFC Championship game, but if Mike McCarthy does a thing where, like, you know, he he tries to run a play with 13 seconds left, and there's only enough time to run a play if there's like 17 seconds left on the clock. If they lose in a comically <laughs> fat fashion, yeah, for Mike McCarthy, if he looks where his brain just if, stops, if he looks extra fat while they lose because of a brain boner that he has, mm-hmm. I think then Mike McCarthy will be fired no matter what in the playoffs, unless it's the Super Bowl. I could see Jerry keeping him around. If he makes it to the Super Bowl, no matter what. Yes. But if it's even in the NFC Championship game, if he loses to like a skinnier, hey, oh god, if he lost to like Sean McVay in the NFC Championship game because Mike McCarthy d- does something where his fat impedes his own brain, right? Well, well, McVay's looking all gelled up and greased on the other side. Yep. I could see Jerry Jones firing him. I'd that. agree with that. I'd agree with that. Um. Okay. So yeah, I mean the Cowboys are are they're definitely in the contenders, wouldn't you say, in the NFC? Yep. 
Uh, next up, Falcons Panthers, the sneaky funny funnest game of the day. Who would have thought? It's a great game. It was an awesome game. Oh, Aaron Rod. Oh, okay. Is Aaron Rodgers not shaking Josh Allen's hand? No, they did a minute ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was about to get on my high horse, start going after people. They're still jawing after. Oh, no, that's love. Uh, all right, Falcons 37, Panthers 34. This game was so much fun. 44 points scored in the second half. P.J. Walker with an absolute dime to D.J. Moore with 15 seconds left, like 60 yards, and then D.J. Moore takes off his helmet, penalty, Eddie Pinheiro, Misses the extra point over time. Marcus Mariota th- throws an interception. Panthers are going to win again. Eddie Pinheiro misses the, the field goal. What, 34-yarder? The Panthers should have won this game. I bet David Tepper just slipped him like a, a few grand for missing those kicks. I don't, dude, they would have been in first place in that's, the NFC South. That's true. They're frisky. That's true. And the, pa- and the Falcons deserve credit because they're very injured right now. Like, you could tell their defense is very injured. Um, but it was it was crazy because you thought, both these teams aren't that great, and and I don't know. The Panthers are not an easy out anymore, and the Falcons are the first place team in the NFC South going into November. I love that division. That it's divi- crazy. That division is is crystal meth personified. It's crazy because I've we talked about the Falcons last week on the show, and I've spent precisely one week as a Falcons supporter. Yep. And I don't know how people from Atlanta do it. It's like like if you adopt the Falcons as your team, like. You might you you're the guy that that gets a weird pet that gets like a porcupine in your own house. Yeah, and it's like, oh, it's cute. Oh, it's just gonna cause me severe pain all the time whenever I try to touch it. This sucks rooting for the Falcons. But it it's is, gonna be tough. Yeah, and this game at the end of it, it was a contest to see which team was the most Falcons. It was the Falcons were really Falconsy at the end there when they let the Panthers come back on that hail mary, and then the Panthers turned into the Falcons mm-hmm. by missing the extra point after the 15-yard penalty, then the Falcons became the Falcons again when Mariota threw that pick, and then the coup de grace was the Panthers becoming the Falcons again, With Eddie missing Pinheiro, the Eddie yeah. Pinero kick. I was so bad. And I, I I want the Falcons to win the NFC South. I think it would be hilarious and awesome, and we like Arthur Smith a lot. I, I did bet on the Panthers plus four and a half this game, so I was, I was rooting for the Panthers when it felt like they were about to give up the game in a horrific – like they were – this game was close the entire time. And then they had the let's go for it on fourth and seventeen on our own ten, and then give the Falcons a, a field goal. But yeah, I don't. I I hope the Falcons can, can sustain it. I hope they get healthy. I don't want to see. The, I want the Bucks to not make the playoffs. Like that's fun. Yeah. And guess what? Right now, if the if the season ended right this second, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would have the eighth pick in the draft. That's crazy. Is that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> it's nuts. So I'm I'm rooting for the Falcons. It does feel like the NFC South has like. Ten more twists and turns. It would have been it. fun too, seeing the entire division be three and five. Yeah, that would have been an awesome. I was rooting box for a tie score. just because that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, a tie would have been perfect in this game. This game, you know how week one we said that we're awarding a tie to the Bengals and the Steelers because there were some wacky missed kicks at the end of that game too. Yeah, I think that's what happened, right? Joe Burrow against uh, against Mitch. I think we gave them a tie, so we can give this our second part of my take tie of the week. We can award a tie to a team that ended up losing each week. So congratulations to the Panthers. I'm going to count this as a tie for you guys. I didn't remember where I knew Philip Walker from, but he was the best quarterback in what the you XFL. F- Philip Walker, yeah. PJ Walker, yeah, yeah, XFL, yeah. 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 So he, yeah, last week, remember he and B- Taylor Heineke and PJ Walker mm-hmm. beat Aaron Rodgers. XFL legends beat Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, he's uh, he's awesome. I like him. And he, you could tell, too, the whole team likes him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they're playing for Steve Wilkes. They're playing for P.J. Walker. I like it. I'm, I'm, Panthers are going to be a fun team. Yeah, they're not an easy – like, you go through these ebbs and flows. Vibes matter in the NFL. Yes. Yeah. And he, that rule was bad vibes. Very Steve bad Wilkes, vibes. Steve Wilkes, great vibes. Yes. It, it, you, go through, you go through ebbs and flows, and, and, like, you can pick teams. You're like, oh, this team's going to be really, really bad. I think the Texans have finally reached their final, like, resting point of just being the worst. But the Panthers, they'll pick off another team at some point this yeah. year because they are they are feisty and they play hard and their defense is not terrible. They're like a trap well, they game. Got cashed. They're like a trap game every week. Yeah, I think every team that plays against them for the rest of the season is going to overlook them to a certain extent. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so 
I now have Packers fans being like, it wasn't the ass kicking that you thought it would be with the Bills. That's loser talk, Packers fans. Welcome to my world. You're basically you're 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 happy that you didn't get completely embarrassed in the second half. You or me, we're the same. A loss is a loss. I fucking love that. Uh, okay. Speaking of the NFC South, let's stay with it. Saints 24, Raiders 0. Mm. So we have six TVs here. We realized that one of the uh, the quad box they usually put on was ahead. Or sorry, was yeah, was ahead of the other TVs. So we had to say we got to eliminate one game from all the TVs. We eliminated this game. And goddamn were we right. Because Nailed it. I didn't even realize this. I went back and I looked. The Raiders didn't get past the 50-yard line until 3.15 left in the game. That is some, like, early season uh, SEC versus a Mac school shit. Derek Carr didn't run a single play in Saints territory the entire game. It's insane. They they had, if you count, if you take out the garbage time, it was 24 nothing, and they brought in, who they bring in? Oh, Stidham. Stidham. Stidham came in, and they, they drove almost to score. If you take that drive out because it was completely meaningless with like five minutes left, the Raiders had nine first downs for 119 total yards of offense. Nine first downs, yeah. For 119 and yards. They had a shitload of, of three and outs in the first two quarters, especially. They just they couldn't do anything yeah. offensively. Here's a fun little stat, Big Cat. Um, okay, let's jo- hear it. Josh McDaniel. I think it's time that we have the national Josh McDaniel conversation. And we can zoom out a little bit on that, too. And look at it more as like a Bill Belichick assistant coaches conversation. Yep. But for now, we'll start with Josh McDaniel. If you take away the six game winning streak that started McDaniel's career as a head coach for the Broncos, mm-hmm. what do you think his record is as a head coach? It's bad. It's six and twenty. Six and twenty. Six and twenty. Not good. And the reason why I'm okay with with saying after that six game start to that season because his players have come out after the fact and said. We were cheating. We were videotaping our opponents' practices, and that's what we were using to get ready for games. We got a letter telling us to stop that, so we had to stop cheating. So without cheating, McDaniel it, McDaniel's is six and twenty as a head coach. Um, if you look at Belichick's former coaches yeah. that have gone on to coach in the NFL, their winning percentage is forty one percent. Not good. They're a combined no. two twenty five. No. 319 and one. So that's a pretty big sample size. That's not just like two or three guys. 225, 319, and one. Do you know who the best coach has been? The best head coach that has been a former Bill Belichick assistant coach? Mm. Hank? Mm. Do you know? I would say Ro- no. Manchini? Romeo had a. Is it Bill O'Brien? Oh, is it Pete? Ki- no, they make no, the Pete playoffs Carroll a few the... times. It's it's Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien. And Bill yeah, O'Brien. The Texans did. Yeah. yeah, good yep. call, Jake. Bill O'Brien was fifty-two and forty-eight, Stunt. and he's the best one. Yeah. Just something to think about. That's there. nuts. I don't know what it is. I've I've maintained for a while that Belichick just sends off these satellite coaches to go ruin other teams in the AFC and just destroy them to make it easier for him to win Super Bowls. Not yep. nepotism. Nepotism. That's why they're playing bad. That's why the Patriots are playing badly now? Yeah. You said mm. it, not Mike. Hmm. Interesting. Well, no, I just think that that what you just said proves the exact opposite. That Belichick is the secret. Yes. And his brain is the secret. And the coaches underneath him. he doesn't give them. the secret to anyone. He does, he, because he or Ernie Adams was the secret. Because Bill Belichick And if he is going to give the replicate. secret to anyone, probably his sons. There are certain things that you just can't replicate. And just because you spend enough time around a guy doesn't mean that you're going to be that guy when you go out on your own. Yeah. Remember we asked Julian about it? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, a lot of guys try to be Belichick when they mo- move into the new places and they just can't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They can't do it. And and this this was like the Raiders coming off. I know it was the Texans, but they were coming off a, a, a win that it looked like everything was kind of coming back together off of a bye week to get a goose egg and to have that. I Derek Carr is injured a little bit, but he has a back. Uh, we all have backs, but he has a back. He has a bad one. Uh, Waller's out. Devontae Adams was sick. Not making excuses because you, the Saints defense, they look like the Saints defense we all expected today, but they have not been that defense all year, and you got 
119 yards of offense. This is whopping. With your with your first team uh, offense. It was whopping. whopping. An this, absolute whopping. This was a signature loss by the Raiders, whereas before I was like, oh, the Raiders. They I can, like that. They I can like play, you said that. You signature like, loss. They can play with anybody yeah. before this game, right? No, I'm, my now, pinky's fine. Now I'm like, this team fucking stinks. This is a signature loss. They put their name on this one. I do think that just Derek Carr and Andy Dalton in general gave off big – like either one of those guys can end up having a, at least like a two or three year career starting for the Colts. Yeah, maybe next season. Uh, Andy Dalton is a, a fine, nice guy, right? Nice guy. Andy. Yeah. The game was over when Jameis Winston did that rap. The rap the was incredible. The rap, absolutely. Like the Raiders probably heard that and they're like, "Well, it's like they saw the dragon, right, Hank?" And then they're like, "Fuck that! I'm turning around, I'm getting the hell out of here." I still want to get Jameis on. Pardon my take. I hope he does come on someday. You uh, can't play it for a season. Can you just rap it? For the, for the listeners who might not have seen the clip. You want to wrap it, PFT? My I name's Seamus Winston, and I'm here to say I got banned from Uber because I grabbed her on... No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the thing was. All right. Do you know it? He, no, I was he, saying, I was saying, like, we would, you know, we'll just put it in, I guess, but I was asking if, you know, we could avoid the copyright. You could just... It's a lot like the Malcolm Kelly freestyle after the Big 12 championship. Okay. Oh, man. Boys is getting quiet. Going to get crunk. Yeah. Head back to Longview, Kelly popping trunk. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. Yeah. Riding and I'm sipping. Yeah. Yeah. Let me come through four foes that are tipping. Yeah. 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 Let me yeah. Yeah. Watch the trunk crack. Yeah. 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 Let me sit sideways, see me running back. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe AP. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe AD. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't even tripping because we some athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Messing with Smitty yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. Yeah. He get pissed if we don't make our time. Yeah. Yeah. We gon' get it, cause we gotta finish. Yeah. Nebraska horn hustles, man, we diminish. Yeah. Put them little, yeah. paint like a skittle. Yeah. I ain't even tripping, I ain't never double dribble. Yeah. Cause I'm a player from the Himalaya. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, man. Maybe back door, yeah. maybe fall off. Yeah. Sipping codeine, cause I gotta kill a cow. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the big bins. Yeah. Oh, you boys, they my brothers, they my friends. Yeah. Holla at Co Sumlin, yeah. holla at the stoops. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the Tudo coop. Yeah. Cause I'm sitting clean, yeah. foes on the lead, yeah. look at my pants, got a sag in my jeans, yeah. let me sit sideways cause I'm steady coming, yeah. PT throwing that ball and it's humming, yeah. I'ma gon' catch it, yeah. I'ma gon' wretch it, yeah. man I'm sitting sideways, boy show it naked today. Yeah. What, what Jameis was saying, uh, he did a, I think he did the podcast with, I think Mark Ingram and someone else in the Saints has a podcast, Jameis was talking about eating the dub, Yeah, and I realized like, he just he's a leader. Even though he's goofy, he was like, "Yeah, I really ate that tub." And and they're like, "Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of weird." And he like paused. It was like, "No, no, no." But I I ate that tub. Mm -hmm. Like I meant it. And he's just I just love Jameis so much. And yeah, the Saints are they I this is another game similar to the the Denver game we we're talking about with Bradley Chubb. There were rumors that uh Alvin Kamara is going to get traded. Yeah. So the Bills inquired the Eagles inquired, which I would love for the Eagles to do it just because the Eagles would essentially just trade back the, the pick that the Saints traded them. That was what it would be for. The Saints, this, the Eagles have the Saints' first-round pick in 2023. It would be hilarious. They're like, give us your best player, and we'll let you have your pick back. Would be a very funny trade. That would be good. But either way, Alvin Kamara was incredible today. He did it all, three touchdowns. He had that one touchdown where he scored – and they were like, Raiders were bouncing off of him, and he just didn't even flinch. And he was just standing up. They were all like launching themselves at him, and he was just standing up and casually put the ball over the goal line. Like, this guy is awesome. The Saints should not trade him. Yeah, no, I agree. And they said that they uh, they talked to the Bills, but the Saints rebuffed the Bills. Yeah. Which I don't I, – I'm not – when we say like the whole just one ball thing, I don't always believe it. It's something that's fun to say. I do feel like there's something to the Bills' offense and the way that it's running right now, incorporating a guy like Kamara who who does need a shitload of touches to get going. Yeah, that might derail what the Bills are doing offensively. Yes, it yes. could it could happen. Yes, it might be one of those blessings like, you know, God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. And and I see Max, you're just shaking your head. You don't want Alvin Kamara on your team. Uh, I don't want to give up a first round pick for overpaid running back. Okay, all right. So there it is. He is very, very good though. Just so you know, yeah, he's very actually good, but... the first player uh, with ten games 
uh, having a rushing and receiving touchdowns in his first six seasons. No other player in the first six seasons of their career had a rushing 10 games with a rushing and receiving touchdown in the same game. He had two touchdowns on the ground, one in the air, 158 total yards. He was their entire – Alvin Kamara beat the Raiders by himself. His offense, he, his offensive output was significantly larger than the Raiders' first-team offensive output because they scored zero points and had 119 yards. That's how crazy this game was. We got a little Taysom Hill action today, too, yeah. which was nice. Yeah, yeah. so either way, we, good credit to us, because this game was the best game to not have on TV. Yep. It was, it. We, we absolutely nailed it. Uh, next game, we will talk about your Eagles, Max. Eagles 35, Steelers 13. This was an ass-kicking. This was, I feel bad for the Steelers, because they kept on. It looked, Jalen Hurts hitting A.J. Brown on a go-route for three touchdowns in the first half. They, they looked identical plays, and they just he kept on just dropping it in a bucket to A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown would have two, three Steelers on him, and it was so easy, and it was one of those games that if it, it felt like if the Eagles wanted to win by 100, they could have. They kind of took their foot off the gas. But I, I, will give, I always give credit to teams that don't have those letdowns against inferior opponents, and they just kick the shit out of the teams they should kick the shit out of. Yeah, I think Roger Goodell needs to take a look at the taunting rule in the NFL because they called A.J. Brown for a taunt when he, he caught a touchdown pass. The two guys tried to tackle him, bounced off him, fell on the ground. A.J. Brown was just standing in the air, and he points at both of them. He goes, you couldn't guard me, you couldn't guard me. Very simple, matter of fact, stated facts to the people, and then he got a flag called on him. Goodell likes to officiate things like, if 100 drunk guys in a bar think it's a catch, then it should be a catch by the rule book. 100 drunk guys in a bar watch that play, yeah. and they see him point at the guys and be like, I beat you. I beat, I beat you. you. Yeah. 99 drunk guys would be like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Don't flag that. Don't though. flag it. Don't, I, want a public, was, I want a public apology. from You know how he likes to leave notes in people's lockers being like, hey, yeah. you had a great game, Tyreek Hill. Let me get that piss. I want a note left in A.J. Brown's locker being like, Upon further review, that kicked ass. Yes, sorry. He was just he was just he was just pointing out a fact. Yeah, I, I own you, you can't and guard me. you. You can't guard this me. This is uh, this is the third time we've run the same <laughs> yeah. play, and you haven't done anything to stop. Yeah, he's lucky he didn't do anything <laughs> worse than that. Yeah. Like, it was. Showed, I think that was the third one. He showed tremendous restraint. <laughs> it's the same go route and the same perfect pass from Jalen Hurts for a touchdown, and he's just like you and you mm -hmm. go home. And he'd actually, Mike Tomlin benched one of them. Yeah, so he did them a favor. <laughs> yes. He was telling he pointed he, out, he's, he's like, like, Mike, this, these guys that cannot guy, guard That me. guy can't guard, that guy yeah. on the ground, he can't guard me, Mike. <laughs> what a gentleman. He was yeah. being nice. Yeah, that was a, that was a total shit pumping. Um, I've got a stat here. Okay. Um, Eagles second quarters this season. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is an updated stat because I saw that, yeah. that Field Yates tweeted out some old numbers at the start of the day, so I personally updated it. Um the Eagles in the second quarter of this year, they've scored 126 points. The Steelers, in total this year, have scored 120 points, and they've played an extra game Ooh. over the Eagles. Ooh. So the Eagles are just they're just dominant in they're the second quarter. Dominant. They're absolutely dominant. Not so great sometimes in the second half, but they don't need to be. They just get up huge on you, and then they just play smart football in the second half. Max, you're probably – are we greasing up the telephone poles? Are we just going to leave the polls greased from after the Phillies win the World <laughs> Series until the Super Bowl? Um, sh no, I mean I'm worried about a I'm worried about a baseball series right now. That was perfect. Like, go take care of business. Don't worry about the game. Beat the shit out of them and let's go win a baseball series this week because it was beautiful. Oh, this was just it a blip was, on it was the not even. Yeah, oh, you didn't even. Have to I didn't even your think brain. about it. I walked in and I saw Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, two tutties back to back. I'm like, all right, we're good. This yeah. Is, let, yeah. let let's let's calm down. Let's get ready for let's get ready for this week because the birds are going to take care of business and it's going to be fine. And Mike it, Trout was there. It was yeah. Mike there. Trout was yeah. there. Yeah. It was it was like uh, the Eagles went down and scored. And you're like, okay, this is going to be easy. Then the the Steelers did some a little frisky stuff. They had the Chase Claypool to Derek Watt touchdown. Congrats, Hank. You cash your bet. Um, that had to feel nice. Yeah. Is Chase totally. is Chase Claypool actually left handed? I don't know. I can't figure out if that was. <laughs> The, the way that I have to imagine Steelers' offensive meetings are going now is basically like a brainstorm session. They meet in a room that's got a bunch of bean bags, and they say, okay, there are no bad ideas here. Yeah. Let's yeah. try to rethink everything that you know about how to play football 
and we'll try whatever you want to yes, try. Yes, just right now. just give it to us. But it was funny because they, the the Steelers went on a long drive, scored a touchdown with these trick plays, and the Eagles. It felt like the Eagles were like, "Oh, okay, so you guys actually want to try a little bit." We'll just do this thing, mm-hmm. and then they just did the same play two more times in the first half, and and that was it. It was never they never looked back. It never felt in doubt. Um, this the Eagles. I know people are going to say they don't they haven't played anyone. I would push back and be like the Cowboys, even with Cooper Rush, their defense is still very good, and the Vikings. The Vikings are the second best team record wise yeah. in the NFC right now, and the Eagles shit pumped them. But yeah, this one was not. It wasn't fair. Listen, the Eagles, it wasn't fair. The Eagles play who they play, and they've beaten the fuck out of everybody that they played. Yeah. And if you look at their schedule for the rest of the year, they're not playing a whole lot of great teams. They're not. They don't do their schedule, so they play the Cowboys in Dallas. I like that. They don't do their schedule. They don't make it themselves. <laughs> yeah. They play the Cowboys in Dallas. They're hosting the Packers, and besides that, like Titans. Titans, I think, are is because it's Tractor Cedo yeah, season yeah, coming yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. Started today, I, I think, but we can get to that later. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. have the Super World Series Mega Week in Houston. Yes, oh, short week. The Super World I know, Series I Mega. I like that, Jake. Yeah, assuming the series goes back to Houston. The Super Mega. Yeah. You know what sucks though? We're not going to get an announcer talking about like, oh, I took the monorail from Minute Maid Field right out to the NRG day. Stadium or whatever. Works out for the fan though. It does. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, Philly takeover in Houston on Thursday. If, if yeah, the series gets we got to get yeah. the – yeah, maybe the Phillies will just close out. We'll talk some baseball a little bit later. I know that you're on high alert, very nervous. Uh, but, yeah, this game didn't have much more other than – it's it, the, the Eagles are very, very good, and the Steelers, it feels like they just shift each week to see which wide receiver is pissed off. I saw Claypool was throwing his helmet at the end. It's – I'll say something nice about Pittsburgh. I love the city of Pittsburgh. They're not used to losing like this. No. Because they are losing, and they're losing badly this year. This is, I mean, it's going to be Mike Tomlin's first sub-500 season. Yeah, and the way they're losing, it's it's welcome to the rest. Welcome to our side. Mm-hmm. It's nice, sh- like, having having someone have to dip their – Hank kind of did it at the beginning of the show. Having other franchises have to dip their toes into the bad side of the NFL. It's not so much fun. It's funny. I, I asked uh, Jersey Jerry – what he thought was going to happen this offseason. Because we don't think that Tom... We, we talk about Tomlin maybe being on a hot seat. They're probably not going to fire him because it's Pittsburgh. They don't fire anybody. But Jerry was like, yeah, they're probably not going to fire Tomlin, but uh, they're really going to clean house after this season. That's the most Pittsburgh answer yeah. ever. It's like, yeah. everyone's getting fired except the head coach. Yeah. We have to keep him J- around. Just to remind everyone that uh, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers have had three head coaches uh, since we landed on the moon. I think yep. it's 1966. Yeah, Chuck Knoll, three, three, Bill, Bill Cowher, Cowher, Mike, Mike Tomlin. Tomlin. That's it. We just got coaches. Yeah. Three of them. Have there been more leaders of North Korea <laughs> or Pittsburgh Steelers uh, head know. coaches since 1969? <laughs> yeah. I think equal. Yeah. Kim Jong-un, Shit. Kim il Sun. It's pretty sad to think, too, like our franchise is like we – I think we can go back less than a decade to get to four. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, four head coaches. And the, Tressman was 2000. His last year was 2014. So, Tressman, John Fox, Matt Nagy, and now Iberflus. So, uh, yeah, that's four in in 10 years. Yep. Mike Shanahan, Jay Gruden. <laughs> uh, Jay Gruden had a long run. Yeah, he did. He yeah. had a nice little run. He had, yeah, yeah. He had Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Uh, maybe greatest quarterback in Redskins history in it's, the last 30 years. We'll, we'll get, get to Tyler that. Heineke. Yeah, well, we'll get to He's that. He's the best. We'll get to that. Ever. Uh, okay. Before we fit, go to the afternoon slate, let's do another ad, and then we have four more games to get to. Yes, we're going to get to more football in a second, but these NFL Sunday recaps are brought to you by Norton VPN. There's no sign of identity theft slowing down, and why should it? More than $14 billion were stolen from identity theft victims last year alone. To cyber criminals, it's a success story. To the rest of us, it's a wake-up call. Your personal info is in more places now than ever. And all that exposure can make it dangerously easy to steal your identity. LifeLock by Norton makes it easy to help protect yourself by monitoring your identity and alerting you to threats that you could miss on your own. If you become a victim of identity theft, a U.S.-based LifeLock restoration specialist will be dedicated to your case and they will work to fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But LifeLock by Norton makes it easy to help protect yourself. Save up to 25% off your first year. Just go to LifeLock.com slash PMT. That's LifeLock.com slash PMT for 25% off. 
Okay. Afternoon slate. Is Jake pooping? I think he's pooping. I think he, he ran, just po- he he pooped ran right out. before the show started. He didn't even shut the door. He's got some issues. He's got some issues. You guys want to do any slanderous uh, rumors about, about Jake? One of his teams or something? Uh, we didn't do anything like that. Yeah, Hank, why are you, you so still paranoid? didn't listen? Rent free, bro. You didn't listen. We live rent. You never in listened. Your head. We said Blake Griffin. He asked PFT and I for. I didn't uh, know you were talking. About. I just asked a one question. of the great starter jackets that we now have on sale that are incredible. So Blake Griffin will probably be wearing them walking into a game soon. And he, we said, can you pump up Hank? And he said, the Celtics team is the best team I've ever played on. He said that. He literally. We said literally that. said that on the show. And That's then, incredible. but you don't listen yeah. back. And we said, and no so one you thought Hank. we were slandering you. And now, egg on your face. Apologize oh. to us. <laughs> All right. And if, thank us at the same if time. If that's true, mm-hmm. I do apologize. Okay. And Good. Thank you. Yeah. Apology not accepted. Big Ev. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, okay. Would you, Big Ev? That's a big if. Big if. Oh. Big if. <laughs> okay. Listen back. Uh, okay. Titans. Texans. Titans 17, Texans 10. Tractor Cito season is officially here. He had... Oh, Jake's back from his poop. Um, he had 219. Jake's back from his poop. UK, Jake? Yeah. What are you doing, Jake? P, number one. Number one. You just gave up number one. Uh, he had 219 yards, two touchdowns. This is one of the two games that we said, uh, this and the Commanders and Colts, should not have been an afternoon game. It did not have afternoon game vibes. Not at all. Uh, but Derrick Henry just dominated the Texans, and he always dominates the Texans. So the last four times that he's played the Texans, he has run for 892 yards and nine touchdowns. That's so bad. If he played – what is that noise? It uh, sounds like a cop car. If he played – if Jake? Derrick – if Derrick Henry was allowed to play a 17-game season just against the Texans, he would run for 3,791 yards and 38 touchdowns. <laughs> that's that's what he's done the last four games just against the Texans. He has uh, he also is the uh, now tied for the lead with two great guys, Adrian Peterson and O.J. Simpson, for uh, most 200-yard games in NFL history with six. Mm-hmm. You'd think it'd be more than that, but no. Tractor Cito, four straight games, 100 yards. He is fucking awesome. So most games in NFL history with 200 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. Oh. Three, LaDainian Tomlinson. He had three. Uh, Barry Sanders also had three. Yeah. Jim Brown also had three. And then in first place is Derrick Henry only against the Texans with four. Crazy. And then overall, Derrick Henry has six of those games. Crazy. Four of which have come against the Houston Texans. He just absolutely owns. What are you guys giggling about? What are you guys giggling about? Are Fucking, you... we, we, have, we have this new graphics kit. <laughs> Making thumbnails for the YouTube. Go go look at the YouTube. And he sent it to me, Max, and Memes. And I'm in the thumbnail with my face fat as fuck. <laughs> oh, let me see it. Oh, it you got so a like, question. I go, I go, I go, I go why great. did you fatten my face? And he goes, that's one of the notes. And I just said, interesting. I, yeah. I also don't think that was one of the notes. Well, li- listen, hey. But this I, is like a new no, game. I mean, I don't. One of his first, hey, there's I don't no know way. If you there's no way that this kid for very long, that we just do. hired did, made that on his own <laughs> no. with memes in the fucking in the mix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> memes did it? Memes knows that, that fattening people's faces and thumbnails plays. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it happens to all of us. No, I know. I just, you know, I, I just wanted to get to the bottom. This of kid's it. definitely shitting himself right now. No, it's like, not. I don't. I know it wasn't him. I know it was memes. I know it was memes. This is smart for engagement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have to post a fat face. Yeah, one now we guess. have to. You did that uh, yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, Tractor Cito season has officially begun. They were basically just like, hey, Malik Willis, it's your first start. Just give the ball to the guy that owns the Houston Texans. One single pass attempt in the second half. Pretty good. Pretty he good had, game plan. It was uh, Malik Willis was 6 for 10 for 55 yards. He had um, four, the, the, the Titans had 40 yards, pass yards, net pass yards. So I had uh, Evan, who does some of our stats. Stat hole does some stuff too. Shout out both those guys. Uh, he, I had him look up the fewest pass yards in a win in a dome win because obviously Mac Jones. What do he have last year? Like seventeen yards or something? Whatever it was. Fewest pass yards in a dome win. Uh, Chris Winky. I just had to mention legend. Chris Winky because yeah. he's a legend. Uh, once beat with the Panthers. Once beat the Falcons in two thousand six. With uh, 11 net pass yards. That's pretty cool. He went four for seven <laughs> for 32 yards. Did you send it, Hank? Hank does look fat as shit in that picture. 
Oh, yeah. I like this. Wait, where's Jake? Oh, you look so fat. I look skinny compared to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, uh, nice. Wait, this guy works quick. He... I, I'm wearing this right now. Yeah, he's this just is my watching us. This is my face from right now. He's watching us. How did that happen? I, I actually don't know the answer to that. He's probably watching because us. Well, What's I, up? That's I sent him the whatever, whatever. You, but, you sent him a picture? About it. picture? Yeah, the beginning of the show, I sent, I sent them. He oh, got a nice. screenshot. Um, okay, so yeah, that was that was my only... I just Anytime I can mention Chris Wenke, I have to. Mm-hmm. So he, he once won a game with 11 net pass yards. He was 4 for 7 for 32 yards passing. That's pretty. It's cool. pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty fun. Malik Willis had a, a QBR of four point five, and still won. Yeah, yeah, and and I think we can officially say the Texans are the worst team in the NFL. I think it's safe to say I I gave the Texans out as my lock of all locks because I was like, hey, Malik Willis going against Lovey Smith. Yep, he'll probably be able to at least cover the spread. My my deep numbers didn't look into the fact that Tractor Cito season had begun today. Yeah, and so if I if anybody had even given me an inkling of the fact that the Houston Texans are, are Derrick Henry's personal bitch, I probably would have made that my bet of the week. Yep. Um, but I didn't have the luxury of deep diving deep into the numbers to realize that Derrick Henry is good at football. Yep. So uh, I think this is the start of something good for the Titans and for Derrick Henry, and they'll get to a place where they feel good about themselves going into playoffs where Ryan Tannehill will then choke it away for them. Yes. Um, here's what we're going to do for the Texans uh, going forward. We're just going to remind you of your draft picks because that's really all you have to do. Like, if I were a Texans fan right now, after every Sunday, I would just pull up the future draft picks and just look at it and stare at it, maybe even print it and put it on my refrigerator. Do that if you're a Texans fan. They have two first-round picks next year. They have three in the third round. They have, like, five in the sixth round. And then... In 2024, they also have two first-round picks. So just keep thinking about that. Yeah. You have four, four first-round picks coming in the next two years. Just print those out. Watch the Browns lose. Like, Monday night, just root against the Browns. That's actually just as good as, like, imagine if the Browns really crater and mm-hmm. the Texans get, like, the first and second or first and third. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, and you don't have Jack Easterby anymore. Yeah, that's huge. Right now, um, the Browns would have, or sorry, the Texans would have the second and the seventh pick. Yeah, oh, that's and, pretty cool. And it's also probably pretty cool to watch the Cardinals lose because you're like, oh yeah, we lost some of our great players that are over there. Yeah, but at least they're not winning behind my back. Right, exactly. So just do that if you're if you're a Texans fan. I want to see I want to see someone print out the picks you have upcoming. Put it on your refrigerator. Look at it every day because we always talk about hope in the NFL. This is why going back to not to to k- keep going back to the Jaguars, but like that's w- why I was talking about how demoralizing a loss like today is because the stages of, of being bad, being bad with a shitload of draft picks is not a terrible place to be in. No, that's hope. Enough. You're not holding enough. hope. And, yeah, maybe the draft picks aren't good, but you don't know that yet. All right, you have so, some time to figure that out. So we have announced that it's Tractor Cito season. There might be a week break that we take in Tractor Cito season because they're playing at the Chiefs mm. Sunday night football next week. Yeah, although – Is that Tractor Cito season? I know that the, the Titans have played well against the Chiefs in the past. But that is a game where it's like if, if the Chiefs go up 14 nothing, yeah, you can't it might do anything. be a problem. Yes. It might be a problem. You can't really play from, from behind – and have Derrick Henry get, like, 35 carries. It would be cool if, if they just did that, though. They should. If, yeah. The, yeah. You should do that. Yeah. You just say, fuck it. We're going to hand the ball to Derrick Henry no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so uh, next game, Commander's Colts. Mm. Billy, you're back on the hot seat. Uh, let's start, though, again with the winner. Taylor Heineke is so much fun. As bad as he played mm-hmm. for the first half. Game-winning drive. He's so much. I, I, I find myself rooting for Taylor. You Heine. can't help but root for him. He's he's fun. He's just he never gives up on anything. He's always trying to make a play. He's the very definition of trying to make a play. He did the thing where he pointed downfield several times today, and he didn't do anything stupid. That's always what you what you fear when he points his finger downfield. It usually means he's about to make the most electric throw of all time or do something stupid as fuck. Right. And he didn't do anything that stupid on those plays. Uh, it was it was great. He knows just like throw the ball to Terry McLaurin because if it's a 50-50 ball to Terry McLaurin, here's a stat for you, Ian Eagle. Terry McLaurin catches 95% of all 50-50 balls thrown his way. Yeah. It's incredible. And he he's from Indianapolis. It was a personal revenge game, which I don't – I guess the Colts didn't pick him. Yeah. 
or he wasn't. But he did he go off. He wasn't recruited out of high school to play for the Colts. Colts, yeah. But I like I like the the angle. Yeah. I bet his overs. It's like, just he a, was a homecoming. Awesome. You you have your family there. Yeah. You have your friends from high school. It was smart to bet the overs on that one. Um, Taylor Heineke is is the perfect quarterback to root for in this situation that I find myself in right now because I don't think he's going to be the future starter of the team based on how he plays sometimes early on in games. Yeah. But he's a, probably my favorite backup quarterback in the he NFL. He is so much fun. He's a good guy. You can't help but root for him. And I did some some digging into the Washington Redskins football team commander's quarterback history. Heineke right now is now 9-8 and eight as a starter. Whoa. He's above 500. There's only one other starter in this team's history – in, since the turn of the century, since the Dan Snyder era truly began, that is over 500, and that's Alex Smith. Wow. So Taylor Heineke is now the second best quarterback in Redskins football team commander's, commanders. history under Dan Snyder. I have another stat for you that you're going to like. The commander's Redskins football team. Now, this is a, a, a misleading stat because a lot of teams will, if they're, if they're down late, will lose the game. That's just how it works. But since 2000... The Commanders football team, Redskins, are 1-128. One win, 128 losses when trailing by multiple scores in the final five minutes of the game. Taylor Heineke just did the second one. First one was Mark Brunel. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Don't tell me. Mark Brunel against the Dallas Cowboys, Monday Night Football, two touchdown passes to Santana Moss. Yep, yep. That was an awesome game. Yep, Uh, and that's – so there's Taylor Heineke. He just won won in 128. He changed that. That's incredible. Yeah. He's fun, man. And and listen, I'll be completely realistic about this because the Colts should have won this game. They had two fumbles, I think, inside the 25-yard line. They gave this game away. They made stupid mistakes. But our defense came up big when we, we, we caused some turnovers. It's not like they were just given to us. Uh, it, we proved that it wasn't just Matt Ryan, maybe, that was the problem with fumbles. Maybe maybe the entire team yeah. was just coughing the ball up a little bit. Yeah, uh, And Frank Reich played like... Uh, chicken shit head coach that was afraid of getting fired. Yes. So he's and he's gonna get fired. Frank Reich was taking the points today. Yeah. Big time. He's like, I'll take the points. I don't care. He kicked field goals uh, from the Washington twenty-one when it was fourth and three. He kicked it on the two-yard line on fourth and goal, and then uh, he punted on fourth and inches with two minutes forty-five seconds left to go. So Frank Reich, uh, chicken shit football, trying not to get fired, which is actually probably going to make it more like Yeah, no, he's fired. definitely getting fired. Uh, by the way, before you do this Sam Ellinger talk, breaking moves. Breaking moves. <laughs> breaking moves. Breaking moves. The Los Angeles Lakers have won a basketball game. All right. Let's go. Good for them. Let's go, Bron. Good for our colleague, Pat, Pat Beverly. They are 1-5. They beat your Nuggets. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I didn't agree to applaud to that. 121 to 110. It's bullshit. Yeah, that's bullshit. NBA uh, rigged. Um, Yeah. Billy, you're up. You you had a huge Sunday he between did. the Jets versus the Patriots and Sam Ellinger finally starting. It started off promising, too, because Trevor Lawrence looked bad. Yeah. And now, well, where are you? They lost the game. He went 17 for 23, 201 yards. No touchdown passes, but also no interceptions. For a first start, yeah, that's not that bad at all. And honestly, from the first uh, first three downs he played, he had a, he span out and threw an incompletion, but hit the guy right in the chest on a very athletic, uh, sort of high energy electric type play. He got that out, and then his last pass. At the end of the game. Was a good pass. Was a good mm-hmm. one hit the guy right in the hands. He dropped it. And then he had a completion to finish off the game. They held him inside and the clock ran out. Like, you know, he did his job. He didn't turn the ball over. And he made plays and made some, you know, there was some sparks where you could see that, you know, maybe down the line stuff starts happening. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a, it was better than Zach Wilson's first start. Yeah. So, Billy, actually, I'm glad that you brought up Zach Wilson. Um would you give up Zach Wilson right now for Sam Ellinger? How deep into this take are you? I'm deep into both of these takes really, really deep. You can only be deep in one. It's like holes. Well, I'm just saying it as a guy who doesn't throw interceptions. No, I'm talking holes. Which Whose hole are you inside of? 
I'm in both holes. You can't. Very deep. And if I want to make a tunnel between the two of the holes and make a tunnel system. Pick one hole. Okay. Then Sam Ellinger would probably go to the Jets. Give, let's give Zach. Whoa. So, yeah. Whoa. Let's, so, so, that's this a big is a moment. a big thing you yeah. just said. You, oh, you my. Know what I, you, you know what I'm hearing, big I'm going to let you take oh, it you back. Backed, you, you backed get, me into I'm my gonna hole. I'm going to let you take it back. You have five seconds to take it back. You backed five, into me. Four. I'm three, not taking it back. Two. One. And it's permanent. It's permanent. But not the guy. Zach Wilson's not you the guy. You want Sam Ellinger I mean, over Zach Wilson. I mean, it's Zach permanent. Wilson jersey. Make it permanent. I just I just said, as a guy who doesn't throw interceptions. That's the kind of guy you want as your quarterback. Yeah, I mean we're seeing you're making it worse right now. You're yeah, just, yeah. you're ba- you're you're filling in his hole. It is one a.m. right now. No, twelve oh five a.m. and I have totally three a.m. three a.m. Also, 3 your your belly's mm-hmm. filled with prime rib. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, filet mignon. You had filet mignon for dinner skewers. tonight. Skewers, skewers. Yeah, not yeah. a filet mignon. It was skewers. The the cults are just sad. Yeah, and I think everyone's getting fired. I think Chris Bauer's getting fired. I think Frank Reich's getting fired. I I don't know. What, like, the team, it, it feels like they've always been uh, – they, they've deluded everyone to be like, we're just one quarterback away, mm-hmm. and they've made the mistake of just keep going with old quarterbacks, and then also the roster is just not as good as it was meant. Like Yeah, you can't permanently be one right. quarterback away. Right. And, and, and they have going to change up. They have – the problem is they have some really good players. Yeah. They have Quentin Nelson. They have Jonathan Taylor. Shaquille Leonard was back. I don't – Shaquille. I, I wish he was still Darius, but I respect that he's Shaquille now because every time I look, I'm like, oh, who's this guy? He was awesome, but yeah, they're they're just not a good good team overall. They're not. They're not. Uh, and the Commanders are in a place where I think now that we've positioned ourselves to finish about 500 for yeah. the season is what that's my prediction, dude. The Commanders which, are frisky. Which they could is, get is in the playoffs? It's BFT. They could. I'm saying like they're okay. So their division, the NFC beast. Yeah. If. Listen, if the Commanders played in the NFC South, they would be kings. I'd be the king of the South right now. But the East, it's like the Giants and the Cowboys are both six and two. Philadelphia is going undefeated this season. I don't see them. It's going. I'm going to give you your path. I, you know, what would be awesome. I would. Yes, I want to hear about a path. I want, I've, I'm going to give you your path. I've started to think about a path. Um, I'm I just think it would be it would be cool if every team in the NFC East got into the playoffs this year. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm going to give you your path, though. You ready for your path? Uh-huh. You got to beat the Giants twice. Yeah. Can you do it? No, no. We never beat the Giants twice. Okay, so you play the Giants two weeks in a row with a buy-in between. It's weird. But uh, I'm looking at your schedule right now. If you beat the Giants twice, I think there is absolutely a way that you guys can get to nine wins. So there it is. Okay. Nine wins you get, it w- would well, probably maybe get you in the playoffs the NFC. Maybe can we? When does flex scheduling start? Um, I think it's in a couple weeks. Is it next week? Because if the, if we can somehow flex Kirk Cousins into the four twenty five time slot, I think that's a good shot for us. Week eleven. Week eleven. Fuck. Right. Oh, daylight savings. Week eleven. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's that date? Because we've gotten daylight savings wrong a lot. So week eleven is what date? That would be, I believe, like the. 13th. 13th. All right, so remember to change your clocks on the 13th, November 13th. Yeah. Um, i just like to apologize to America for having this game on at 425. Yeah, it was fucked up. It, it, the, the commanders should never be on at 425. It was ever. fucked up. Yeah, I don't think it's ever happened before. It'll probably never happen again. This this team has huge 1 p.m. energy. At the most, a 405 kickoff. 425 is just – it's. I'm sitting around waiting for the commander's game to start in the afternoon. Yes. America should not have to go through that. Yeah. So I, I do apologize, but I won't, I won't apologize for winning. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to correct Don't myself. Apologize. It can be changed twice between weeks five and 10. And oh, 11 through interesting. Eight. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next game. We have two left. Uh, this next game. I'm very excited to talk about because I'm dubbing this uh, the narrative stolen game. And that's Seahawks 27, Giants 13. The narrative has officially been stolen. I think the Seahawks are now what the Giants were in terms of the fun team that no one saw coming. They win this game kind of easily. Like, their their defense, the Seahawks' defense, by the way, uh, Tariq Wollen, their, their fifth-round pick, who's been insane as a, a cornerback, like D- Daniel Jones, I think, threw to him once today. Uh, the Seahawks' defense Outside of the garbage time touchdown they gave up to the Chargers last week, they've given up 9, 16, and 13 points in the last three weeks. And Geno Smith's playing well, 
and they're taking shots at Russell Wilson after every win, which I fucking love. They, uh, what, what was the quote? It said, it's amazing. Who said that? It was Lockett, right? Mm-hmm. He said, it's amazing what we can accomplish when no one cares who gets the credit. That was a shot at Russell Wilson. But the Seahawks are the team now. I'm not saying the Giants are dead. We'll talk about them in a second. But the Seahawks the, are the team that no one saw coming. They're now number one. They're, they're in first place in the NFC West. They look for real, kind of. Like, they kind of look for real. And they are the fun team. I think they look really for real. And guess what? I know Brian Dable. We already gave our Coach of the Year votes. We split them between Brian Dable and Arthur Smith. We already mailed that into the league offices. Pete Carroll is definitely in the conversation for Coach of the Year. This team was supposed to be one of the worst teams in the NFL. They, I think we quoted it last week. Their over-under for wins was 5.5. They're 5-3 and three right now. You know why that, that was their win total, though? I think it was heavily figured on the the drew lock situation yeah, yeah i think we were all in our in our estimations and our simulations that i was running in my brain i was seeing drew lock being the quarterback of this team and if you had told me geno smith would be the starter i think i would i would say okay i'm not saying that i would i would still write geno smith off but i wouldn't write him off as hard as i would write drew lock off and that's actually part of why pete carroll should be thought about coach of the year because i would think most nfl coaches would pick the younger guy who still has like, oh, maybe maybe if things work out. Geno Smith's in his, what, ninth year, tenth year in the NFL? There wouldn't be a lot of coaches that would be like, you know what, let's go with Geno Smith. Yeah. He's better. Maybe his upside's not there, but he's just the better quarterback, and we're going to try to compete this year. And Pete Carroll even said after, he said, we look like we used to look, and the stadium was rocking like it used to rock. And it's like, I, I was watching that game being like, I think – I think the Seahawks might actually be pretty good. Yeah, the Seahawks are... They're not great. They're pretty good. They're very good. And and what Pete Carroll's always been awesome at is evaluating talent and figuring out, okay, I know that we just signed Matt Flynn to a huge contract, but Russell Wilson is clearly a better quarterback when he's in the door, so we're going to start him over the big price tag guy. That's what he did again this time. He's great at at identifying defensive talent, too. Yep. Because their defense, their young guys on defense, I've, I've heard... A few of the guys, like Marshawn Lynch, has said these guys look. They remind me of the Legion of Boom. Yeah, but Tariq Woolen is is has been every every bit as good as Sauce Gardner. They're, they're building this team very similar to how they built their team back in like 2013, 2012, which is uh, have an awesome secondary, uh, great tackling in your linebackers, a solid defensive line, and then um, hopefully a quarterback that won't kill you, which yeah. is what Russell Wilson was. At the start, and then just put together an offensive line out of what's laying around. Yeah, that's kind of how they operate. Oh, and then like a strong running back that will make your weak offensive line look good. Right, and, that's, and that's a couple the Seahawks elite, way. elite wide receivers. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, the, the I I love that moment in the game when they called that play for Tyler Lockett and he just dropped the easiest touchdown ever. I think it was like two plays later they called the same play. They hit him in the face, and they're like, "Here you go, do it again, catch it this time." Yeah, and he did, and it was. I, yeah, I do. I I kind of believe in the Seahawks. Like I know that the 49ers have more talent. I know the Rams are Super Bowl champs. All that stuff. I just I'm I'm done thinking the Seahawks are like a little nice story. I I think they can they can absolutely rip off. I'm gonna say ten wins. Maybe it's a possibility. 10 wins. That's uh, it. maybe they, I'm getting ahead get, of myself. They get to play the Cardinals again. Yeah, I'm gonna count that as a win for them. Yeah, they. I mean, the Bucks win. Win. Raiders, Raiders win. win. At Panthers the win, at maybe the not. not. Panthers, that'll be a weird one. Yeah. Panthers and, yeah, that'll be a weird game. That will. Uh, 49ers, lost. Night game, could be rocking. Yeah. At home. Oh, oh it's at home. At yeah. home. I'm just saying, they put on the neon green. Lumen Field. G- uh, Geno Smith, Pump by the way. Crowd noise. Geno Smith uh, has six games with multiple touchdowns this year. He had seven in his entire nine-year career before that. So he's... He's playing very good football. The Seahawks also have a, a very powerful chip that they can cash in at any time, which is just going into the season, they literally were written off by everybody. When a lot of teams try to find, like, what's our motivation going to be, what's our bulletin board material, nobody believes in us. Half the time, like, Nick Saban is great at making that shit up. Yep. He's, like, finding one random message board comment on, like, Hogville in Arkansas and being like, see this guy? See, see call the call the Hogs? 420 69. He doesn't think that you guys can score 40 points. Right. Go out there and score 50. Um, the Seahawks actually have a lot of disrespect that everyone's given them that they can legitimately use to fuel them through this. And, 
And on top of all of that, this has to have been like a complete revelation this season. I know the Broncos won today, but with the way the Broncos have been playing, the way that everyone has been clowning Russell Wilson, it's basically like they got out of a relationship and they're like, see, it wasn't us. Mm -hmm. It was him. Yeah. They just keep getting validated over and over that, like, no, he was the crazy yeah. one, not us. Russell Wilson gaslit the fuck <laughs> yeah. out of the Seahawks right now. Yeah, it's got to feel and, great. And, and they're learning that they're okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, we're can we we okay with Geno Smith. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's It's really nice to be in a relationship with someone that just loves you yeah. back. Yeah, okay, Seahawks, it wasn't your fault. It was not it's your fault. It's not your fault it didn't work out. The only other note I had from the Seahawks side was Pete Carroll got a uh, bumping into the ref uh, flag, which I love was it. very funny. I love it. And, and it was just like his expression afterwards was vintage Pete Carroll. Um, I just I loved every second of that. So, the Giants. I have door one and door two for Giants fans. Um Door one is that the Giants have been a very lucky team and they are now playing teams that are better than them. And when they don't play perfect football, they muff two punts, I think. When they don't play perfect football, uh, they really don't have a ton of talent. And you could see it today. Like Daniel Jones had no one to throw to. Saquon Barkley was getting stuffed. It looked painful for them to move the ball. The, the shoe might have dropped like on New York football this weekend. That's door one. Door two, which I'm inviting Giants fans to walk into and completely fine if you choose this door. It's just they went uh, to London. Then they came back home, played a very emotional game against the Ravens, win that game late, go down to Jacksonville. Same thing, last second win. Then they have to fly all the way across country to Seattle this was a very flat spot for them. You got to just go home, lick your wounds, get back at it. You're still six and two. You still can absolutely make the playoffs. Don't worry about it. One game's not a big deal. I would take door two because you're going to make the playoffs. And you also have the Texans and the Lions next, so yeah. you should so, take door two. So I'm just one. Those are the two doors that yeah, you have no, to. Go, you're, you're thinking about. You're doing door two. Yeah, you're doing door yeah. two for sure because. But you know, you, door one yeah, door, exists. Door one exists in the back of your mind, and actually, I think both doors can exist and you can take both of them. Yeah. I feel like it's two ends of the same wormhole because door one is probably how your season will end up ending. Right. In a loss in in the playoffs. And you probably know that and you're probably fine with that if you're a Giants fan. You know that you might get lucky and win if everything goes your way because you are a well-coached team. You could win whatever your first game in the playoffs might be. But then you run into a really good team in the second round and you probably won't be able to beat that great team. Probably not, unless everything goes your way. So it's like it's a realistic thing that you can think. You can hold both those thoughts, and you're at the same time. Also, this bye week is going to kick ass for you guys because yeah, yeah it, was, it was a tough loss. But also, you're six and two going into the bye you're week. Six and two, and we've been talking about teams that like will get their shit pushed in by the bye week. I feel like the Giants they're they're going to have the best bye week of all time. Yes. Like you're, Dable is going to make the bye week want to join up with him I, and then take them on in the future. And like, this is all the lessons we learned in the bye week. Let's keep this thing. Going. I, I forgot that they had the bye week, which makes the spot even flatter too. Cause like, you're like, all right, we can get through this. And then we just, we have a, a week off. And so, yeah, if you're a giants fan, go through door two because you're playing the Texans, and the lions after the bye week. Yeah. Door one might be something you have to revisit when you play the Cowboys on Thanksgiving day. Yeah. You're going to, that might be a time where you're like, uh Oh, this isn't, this might not be what we thought it was. I mean, I'm going to tell some words to Giants fans that should make everything fine. You're going to win ten games this year. Yeah, I yeah. You're definitely going to win. Yeah, 10 games at this six year. and two, they definitely have four more wins on on the uh, schedule. But th this this game was it was painful to watch because it was even though they were in it and it was like, oh, is this magic just going to keep happening? And then when they got down two scores, like they got nothing to get back in this game. Mm -hmm. Like there's no chance to get back in this game. Everything has to go exactly right. <coughs> yeah. You yeah. You can't make any of the special teams mistakes. That's really the thing. It's like you can't have interceptions and you can't have any sort of special teams turnover. Right. And you should be able to at least keep it within one score of any team. Because I was in the second half when it was a tie game. I was like, they're going to do this again. They just keep winning these games. And then the air kind of came out of the balloon. Um, okay. Let's go with the last game. Roback game. Roback game is brought to you by Roback. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. I'm wearing the joggers right now. Super, super comfortable. Performance joggers. They're amazing. Q-zips, polos, hoodies. I was wearing it all weekend. Go to uh, roback.com, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use code TAKE 
and you get 20% off your first purchase with promo code TAKE. I cannot recommend this stuff enough. It is super, super comfortable. Perfect sweatshirt for fall. Light sweatshirt. Oh, the best. Okay. 49ers Rams. 49ers 31, Rams 14. The Christian McCaffrey Show. This is when we had that talk about how uh, do we need to see an all-star MVP type running back in Kyle Shanahan's system because he can just spit out running backs. And we're like, no, you know what? We do want to see it. And then he got traded the next day. This is what we wanted to see. Yeah, this is awesome. This was so fucking awesome. Christian McCaffrey threw a touchdown, caught a touchdown, ran for a touchdown. Last guy to do it was LT, 2005. I think there's only three guys who've done it ever. Walter Walter Payton, Payton, I know, did. Yeah, so the third guy ever to do it. And it basically, I don't want to say Kyle Shannon did this on purpose, Yeah, but the Rams were the other team that were trying to get Christian McCaffrey, and he basically was like, oh, you wanted this? Well, let me show you how. Let me show you all the moves he's got. Yeah, and he fucking flashed all the moves for them. It's great. It was it was so cool. It's like a kid getting a toy on Christmas, or like I remember one year I got I got uh, new baseball cleats for Christmas, and I wore them like everywhere. I wore them like out to Seven Eleven later on that day. Yeah, I, I couldn't stop thinking about how cool my new baseball cleat. Like this was his new toy, and he's like, I'm going to use it in every way possible. Yeah, I'm going to put I'm gonna, my rollerblades on in the house. Yeah, I'm going to have so much fun. Yes. I'm going to have so much fun with this new thing. And it was awesome. It was everything that we wanted. This was so cool. And uh, he looks fast he, in, in, in that uniform, too. The, I think the 23 makes him look faster. The red makes him look faster. Uh, all of his his hamstrings fine now, Yeah, which is great. Like, it's weird how that happens. You go out, get some, some good California air in you, yep. and then all of a sudden – None of the soft tissue stuff. I would like to see Sean McVay run Aaron Donald in his offense like Kyle Shanahan's running Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Just like run, just, but just power, just like run at people's faces. Because, Aaron. yeah, I mean, th- this is another one where the Rams, even going into half, they look like, oh, okay, this might be different. And then it was just the same old story. Kyle Shanahan owns Sean McVay. Um, I know that people will point to the NFC Championship game. I will say that the 49ers still covered that game. But, yes, that is true. They did win on the way to the Super Bowl. They did win that game. But in terms of regular season, Jimmy Garoppolo has never lost to the Rams, which is crazy. He's 8-0 in the regular season. Uh, This is also a crazy stat that probably doesn't help the Jimmy Garoppolo fans out there. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, his touchdown pass was 30-plus air yards. There have been three touchdown passes by 49ers uh, throwers. In the last, since 2020, to go for 30-plus air yards, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Lance, C.J. Beathard. Oh. That sucks. I thought you were going to say Debo. I <laughs> no, thought Debo no. had one of those. No, but that's like that's one of those ones I saw, it and I was like, oh, boy. Yeah, that's why but, Kyle Shanahan won Trey Lance. Counterpoint is when you're throwing the ball 30-plus yards in the air, it's kind of a drive killer. Yeah, you give the true. ball right back to your opponent. That's true. If you're Jimmy G and you're running for like six yards a clip, takes a lot of time off the clock, and mm-hmm. then that helps your defense get rested too. Yeah. It's like hitting like a three-run homer. would rather have a double in the gap. Rally killer. Keep it going. Uh, here's yeah. a fun stat. 21% of Kyle Shanahan's wins are over Sean McVay. That's crazy. That's a lot of percent. That's a lot, That's of, a lot percent. of percent. Before the game uh, on ESPN, they did the whole Mike Shanahan coaching tree, and they, it was like a nine-minute long segment talking about all these coaches that were on that 2013 Redskins team. I just want to read one paragraph from an article that I found. Uh, from Jason La Canfora talking about how bad this Redskins staff was and how their inexperience was okay. costing them games. Yep. It's just one paragraph from here. The quarterbacks coach, Matt LaFleur, worked with Kyle Shanahan in Houston and had only two years' experience as an offensive assistant, scare quotes, with the Texans prior to becoming the Redskins QB coach. Similarly, receivers coach Mike McDaniel was a lower-level assistant on the Texans staff before coming to Washington and tight ends coach Sean McVay's only prior NFL experience to joining Washington came in 2008 as an offensive assistant in Tampa. This is an article saying this coaching staff sucks. It's Kyle Shanahan's fault for working with all these nobodies. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. The 49ers just for some reason, they just always beat the Rams and the Rams are in trouble now. I don't really know. So they have we have our first loser leaves town game next week. True loser leaves town. The Rams are going to the Bucks. So that is like yeah. Whoever loses that game is going to be in real in a a shitload of hurt. To me that whose line is it anyway? Let's guess it. Rams at, at the Bucks. Bucks and this is Saturday or this is Sunday at 
The I one PM yeah, time slot, maybe. Bucks uh, minus two and a half is my guess. I'm gonna go with Rams. I'm gonna go with Rams minus two and a half. I'll say Bucks minus three. I feel like we're. I feel like the the odds makers are just my brain where it comes like the Bucks can't be this bad. I believe we have an exact winner. Bucks oh. minus two and a half. Bang. Oh, did you look at it? No. Come on. Okay. Well, I'm taking the we Rams. We don't cheat at whose line yeah, is well. it anyway. Right. I feel like this is a, this is a whomping. This has womp written all over it right now. Yeah, you taking the Rams? I'm taking the Rams. I'm, I am, I'm, I'm preclude, rec- recusing myself of this game. I will not be picking this game. You're I gonna take the Bucks. I'm gonna take. You're the obsessed with the Bucks. You take the Bucks. You have to. Dude, the Bucks it's a great six, spot yeah. for them. <laughs> Mini buy. You're buying the as low sickness. as possible with them. I just under. keep buying low. You just keep buying low. With I feel teams. bad sometimes when I pick against Big Cat, but this is one of those situations where I can like you know when you yeah. see your friend that yeah. has a problem and yeah. like they won't take the help. They, they're my new this Falcons. Is Big Cat with the Bucks. Remember the Falcons a few this years ago when they were when there was just all the first round picks and I was like this team is so talented. This is I just keep being like Get Tom help. Brady can't lose this many games in a row. Uh, well, guess what? Someone might be injured for the Rams. Sean McVay probably the dumbest thing. He's ever done as a coach. He had Cooper Cup uh, running routes with a minute left in this game, down 31-14, and he hurt his ankle. Wait, how bad? I, I wasn't factoring that into my it, equation. It, he hurt his ankle. I don't. They don't know, but the dumbest thing you can do. I don't understand what he was thinking. Yeah, very stupid. To, to, with one minute left, he was running plays down 31-14, and Cooper Cup hurt his ankle. Very, very stupid. The one guy I, you can't lose. Mc, so he's the guy. I think he's got – what was the season last year? How many yards receiving did Cooper did Cooper Cup have? Oh, something insane. He, had, he got like the triple crown yeah, or whatever like last 1, year. Yeah, he had like 1,600. I can't even remember. 1,947. 19, that's Whoa. pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, pretty yeah, Sean McVay, you're a dummy. I think, I think it's so personal with McVay at this point that he loses his sense of how to coach and all his strategic advantages – that he has against other coaches, he it's all out the window against Kyle Shanahan. It just becomes like I want to beat this guy so fucking bad because he owns me. Right, right. So that was that was a bad moment for Sean McVay, and I don't know what you know. The Niners feels like they need to have Debo today. So well, what if what if the Rams go out there and they get Kamara? Ooh. It's, that would be quite the arms race. Would that fix everything that's wrong with them? I think it would fix what's mentally wrong with McVay right now, which is he wishes he had McCaffrey. Yeah, right, right. right. It was so And you mean. can you can convince yourself, too, if you get Kamara. You you can convince yourself you're happy with Kamara when you originally wanted McCaffrey. Yes, yes. And they uh, – yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the – I feel like the Rams aren't a running back away right now from, like, everything they're doing. And I also feel like just, just based on vibes – New Orleans shouldn't be sending Kamara to the Rams. You yeah. still got bad blood with the Rams. Yeah, don't do that. Don't let that go. Don't fucking do that. Okay, um, those were all the games. Let's uh, do one last ad, and then we'll do Football Guy of the Week and Who's Back of the Week, and we'll wrap up talk a little baseball, too. Yeah, before we wrap things up, this part of, part of my take is presented by Shopify. You can forget the off-season work. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether you're selling warm-ups or wall hangers, it's time to start selling with Shopify and join the platform that's simplifying commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you're going to customize your online store to your brand. You can discover new customers. You can build relationships that create diehard fans. Shopify fields all the sales channels to grow a winning business from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And thanks to 24-7 support and free on-demand business courses, Shopify is on your team every step of the way. When you're ready to take your winning idea to the world, team up with Shopify. It is the commerce platform powering millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Try out Shopify for free. Start selling anywhere. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash take. That's shopify.com slash take to start selling online today. That is Shopify.com slash take. Okay, Billy, football guy of the week. So our last week's winner was Jason Kelsey with his quote about uh, pregame apparel. And he said, what the fuck do I care about a game day fit? I don't like to play dress up. I like to play football. Mm. Yep. And then I was thinking he did dress up for the parade. So that was a big dress and, up. And he did put on. Uh, a costume when they were clowning yeah, the Steelers this week. Yeah. So 
Hmm. Wait, which mm. Batman is he? I'm not even a uh, uh, Eagles guy, but I that's like you just grab that mask from someone in the crowd. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that's like a. I don't know. The Batgirl stuff they, has been. They happening. were running with the bat stuff. No, yeah, he he had a quote a couple weeks ago that was like, "Well, if we have swole Batman, skinny Batman, and fast Batman, why can't we have fat Batman?" Uh, and that's why it, he did it. So also, major, clown, Tony girl. Brown is just. Fat man. Yeah. Lane, jo- <laughs> Lane Johnson also. Uh, that was the best. Yeah. Dressed up as Jason Kelsey. It was pretty cool. I do like that. Yeah. It was very funny. <laughs> we should dress up as each other for Halloween. Next Halloween. We'll next do Halloween. It. We'll yeah. do it for sure. And we're definitely going to do it. Today. Cool. No, do it next Halloween. Next Halloween. When we wake up tomorrow? No, no, no. no next no, Halloween. Next. Okay. Not this cool. Halloween. Next Halloween. We still have time to dress up. No, no, no. no. Next Not Halloween. this Halloween. Next Halloween. I've already okay. got my costume okay. picked yep. out for okay. too. this Halloween. Okay, so our first nominee this week. I'm going week. as me. I'm going to go I'm gonna go as Max next year. Uh, Sid! The, if a lot of you guys saw, there was a Fuck viral you! moment where a <laughs> Phillies fan, a young Phillies fan, yes. with a P painted on his chest, mm-hmm. was chirping Houston Astros fans in the crowd. And turns out he's a football guy. Yes. So apparently he got on a flight 6 a.m. the next morning to go play in his Pop Warner game and kept the Phillies uh, painted on logo on underneath his equipment while he was playing. So, I mean, getting back for a football game, not even celebrating the win, that's a football guy move. I like yeah. that. A very, and he's flexing for the camera before his game. I like that. Uh, he actually, got in that dude's face, too. Yeah, that, that guy's a dog. That guy, yes. yeah, that, yeah, that guy has a dog in him for he's sure. He's very Philly. Our second nominee is Lane Kiffin in the old Miss game against A and M. He was yelling at one of his players to fake an injury to stop the clock. No, he was yelling at one of the opponent's players, being like, "Yeah, bitch, why don't you get down and fake an injury?" Because the guy was crying to the refs or something. I like that. Game. But also, Lane Kiffin, he's had players do that in the past. He also so. talked shit to Jimbo after too in the press conference. I think. Yeah, which is pretty funny. I like Lane. I do, too. We're Lane guys. Lane really doesn't give a shit. No, he does not give a shit whatsoever. And I, th- I think he's figured out that Ole Miss is a, a perfect place for him to not give a shit about anybody on the outside. I hope he stays there. Because, like, as long as you win football games at Ole Miss, you can do anything. I mean, like, anything. Nothing's off limits yeah. at Ole Miss. He said afterwards. And I mean, everything. <laughs> nothing, yeah. You can. Anything you want to Have do. yourself a time. Yes. Is win. Big time. Uh, he said, maybe Jimbo has a Joker Joker outfit for me after the game. I don't – that's pretty good. There's a lot of, like, internal, like, inside jokes SEC about things that have stuff, been done yeah. in the past in the SEC. I'm just going to assume that that's a really good dig at Jimbo Fisher. Yes. Our third nominee is Coach Rabel. Uh, Coach Rabel was embracing his center, walking out of the field into the tunnel, Ben Jones. Uh, he started crying about how courageous it was that Ben Jones played through so many injuries during the game yeah. and patted on the head and was just bawling on his shoulder. I like that. Yeah. No, he had he had some wild injuries that game. I think, didn't he get moved to center Yeah, as I well? think so. I, I forget exactly how that shook out, but I think he also had diarrhea and like food poisoning before the game. Yeah, Jake just gave a little nod like, mm-hmm. yeah. Taylor was there. there. That Been there. I actually think that that's like, that's – got to be one of the toughest things to do is play an entire NFL game as an offensive lineman while you have diarrhea. Yes. That's Iron Man. I would right agree. There. I'd agree. And our fourth and last nominee is Jim Mora, head coach of UConn, who uh, during the game when they beat UMass for the first time in a very long time, I think ever. No, the no, no. They beat BC. BC. Mm-hmm. Come Bowls next week. Yeah, UMass. It's C for Connecticut and then – UMass, so it's come ass yeah. when they show the logos. Perfect. So it turns out he lives in a haunted house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a little, little Halloween special yeah. for a football guy. He lives in a haunted house and refuses to move out even though he knows there's ghosts in it. Well, he said they're friendly ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So I thought you were going to do Michigan State for beating up that Michigan player. That was bad. Well, that was going to be for my who's back. He got oh, okay. The, All right. He, he got in the tunnel. It or was, the guy was that uh, was – was mowing the lawn before the game with in a tractor or whatever and just ran over the goalpost. Yeah, that was and then cool. the team, that, yeah. they, they just it was like a high school game, <laughs> and they just had to play on one side yeah. of the field. <laughs> That's great. What do you do if you're in that funny. tractor? I yeah. feel like you gotta do. You, you got two routes you can go. One, you can like just quit and walk away and not say anything, or two, you can try to play it off and be like, when I got up to the field, like it was already like that. And yeah. just hope there's no video. That's I, like yeah. um, that a few uh, maybe more than a few years. I I can't keep track of years, but. Uh, Illinois played Northwestern at Wrigley and they didn't measure it correctly 
and it was like a very big hazard in one end zone. So they just had to play. Oh yeah, it was like arena football. Yeah, they had to play one going one way the entire time because if you like caught a touchdown pass in one of the end zones, you just run into a brick wall. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. There Uh, was there was a conspiracy going around on uh, I think it was on Alabama on some message board that they had where they were saying that the the uprights weren't the correct the they weren't regulation in Tennessee and that's why the students like tore them down and threw them into the river oh, to get I like to that. get rid of the evidence I like that, that a lot that, and that's why they missed that field goal in the fourth quarter wow. against the volunteers yeah I like that let's, let's look into it that's some good shit um, okay let's do who's back of the week and get out of here uh, it's brought to you by our friends at Visible. Wireless can be a nightmare, but this spooky season, Visible is saving you from scary wireless with the switching hour. With Visible's $30 a month one-line plan, treat yourself to unlimited data and some spooky good special offers like a gift card up to $200 as well as 31% off select devices when you switch today. Switch at Visible.com slash switching hour. Visible.com slash switching hour to get the best wireless out there. Hank, who's back of the week? My who's back of the week is racing. Yeah. Okay. NASCAR. Yeah. yeah. We're talking NASCAR, NASCAR. baby. NASCAR. Never thought, never thought you'd see the day. Uh, but Spider, guy that works behind the scenes uh, here at Barcelona. I don't think we talk about him much on the show, but huge, huge glue guy. Great guy. He's he's the an best. Ab- absolute. Literally the best. Absolute gearhead. Like, he really loves NASCAR. Rubbin's Racing. Go follow it uh, on social. It's like our na- it's our racing platform. But he loves NASCAR. I'll talk to him about it. Ask him, you know, because he, he makes picks, gives gambling picks, gives some good picks. So, you know, we'll shoot the shit. Ask him what he likes this weekend. Sometimes put a couple bucks on it. And then today we had AJ Elmendinger, the 26 car, part yep. of my cheesesteak car. Yep. So I was I had a little bit more interest in, like, you know, what's going on? How's the race doing? How's our car doing? I don't think we did great. I think we finished, like, in the 20s. Whatever. But I was sitting next to Spider in the afternoon games. They're all kind of a snooze fest. And he's giving me the situation like Denny Hamlin needs to you know finish in fourth or whatever and he makes the playoff he was in the playoffs 16 people and then after this race it gets whittled down to four and Denny Hamlin needed to finish in in a certain spot to advance so I'm watching I'm tuned in and then this guy Ross Chastain who was in fifth him is basically him or Denny he was two two spots behind Denny short track the race was basically over. It seemed like Denny Hamlin had raced his way into the final four. And this guy pulled a move. I, I was speechless. Apparently afterwards, you know, it came out that it's one of the craziest, best NASCAR finishes of all time. But in the moment, I was like, does this happen all the time? Because it was amazing. He just used gravity and, like, science, ran his car into the wall so that he didn't have to brake on the turn and just hit the gas as hard as he could. And he One of the coolest moves I've ever seen. He came behind... Beat Denny Hamlin at the finish line by a hair, and he advances to the playoff, and Denny Hamlin lost. I, I have no idea why more race car drivers don't do this. Yeah. It just looked like he he unlocked – it looked like he caught the uh, the mushroom in Mario Kart and just went faster than everybody else around the outside. The speed why, strip. Why don't you – yeah, why don't you just do that all the time? It, it was unbelievable. This, this, guy, uh, this guy NASCAR man tweeted this out. Chastain's last lap was 18.845 seconds, a second faster than Kyle Larson's pole when no one's on the course, a tenth of a second faster than the track record set in 2014. So, so this guy about- just did. He, he he literally was like, it's like a movie where it's like, the, you know, the, there's no way we're going to get past this unless, and he just, like the happy Gilmore you know when the when the all the shit's on the on the tee and he just has to go up and around. Yeah, yeah. He basically did that in NASCAR. It was just like, well, I got one move left. It's the fuck it run to the wall and just put my f- pedal to the metal and hope I win. And he did. So well, he didn't win, but he he beat Denny and yeah. advanced. I love that. He said that he used to do it on the GameCube in 2005. Like there was some NASCAR game that he he pr- used to do it, and he was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna try it out in real life." It sucks that it happened against Denny, but it was a fucking badass move. I don't think. I think it's one of those things. Denny's probably like, "Yeah, I." I kind of you gotta respect it. Yeah, it's one not like guy, one of the guys called it like a clown move and said it was bad for the sport. I got news for it. That attitude is bad for. Yeah, the Yeah, we're sport. talking about it right now. That was that was awesome. He just he he beat you guys because he had the nuts to drive his race car into a wall, right? And then use centripetal force to slingshot around you. That's that's cool as fuck. Yeah. If you gotta watch the clip, if if you're a little bit confused, it will it will do it justice. It was I wish it was our it was done that. It was one of those things where I, I was destroyed her car, but it would have been sick. Yeah, 
I don't. Well, that's why I was watching. I don't like twenty eighth. We should find him for not doing that. <laughs> I, you know, I've never. I, I can't even tell you the last time I watched a NASCAR finish. So it was one of those things where I was watching. It was like that was fucking crazy. Like this happens all the time. And then it was like, no, this is a once in a lifetime. Yeah. Like once, once, you know. Yeah. One. They call it. I, I saw a bunch of tweets calling it the best non-winning race finish of all time. So because he came in fourth, but. It was unbelievable. Yeah, like that. I'm, I'm, and I'm rooting. I mean, this guy's you got to you got to bet on him to win the championship next Sunday in Phoenix. I'm suspending AJ Allmendinger for not doing that for yeah. for one episode of part of my take. We will not discuss AJ Allmendinger. Fair, fair. Uh, PFT, your who's back? Uh, my who's back of the week is comedy because comedy is now legal on Twitter. Oh, that was an Elon Musk tweet. Nice. So uh, that's a good one. The First Amendment is back. Yep. Elon Musk took over Twitter. And now there are reports that he's going to charge people that have blue check marks twenty dollars a month to keep their blue check. My, I'm very woke on this, by the way. I think that this is like so, coaches do this a lot in sports, where they leak something to a guy that they don't believe. Like I don't know, maybe something along the lines of um, we're considering hiring Condoleezza Rice as right. our next head coach yep. of the Cleveland Browns, and then they see if that makes it into the news, and then they know exactly who they can't trust. Yep. I feel like Elon's doing that right now. There's somebody that he told this information I to agree. that's putting it out there. But that said, there are a lot of people that I guarantee, like we're all addicted to Twitter. Oh, yeah. There are a ton of people that would, you that would pay. Twitter. Well, it's our job. Yeah. yeah. It is we our kind job. kind of have to be. Yeah. You make me be addicted. You're my boss. You force me to be. No, I wish you guys would get addicted to like TikTok. Okay, okay, I will. Yeah, starting starting tomorrow, I'll be addicted to TikTok. Done. Making them or just watching them. Both. Making them. Well, you got to watch to make. That's a Chinese company, though, isn't it? Yeah. So that not free speech. Get addicted to YouTube. Hand, uh, we're not addicted to YouTube. I don't know. All right, we're addi- We'll be addicted to both. Done. It's but not- really addicting. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, well, TikTok. Oh. Yeah, look at Billy's brain. Um, Billy he gets get, all his facts from TikTok. Billy, can you give me a brain dump on Elon Elon Musk taking over Twitter? I personally think that he's doing it um, because he's bored and he's rich, and he thought that this would be cool. Like it would make him cool to be the guy that's the head of Twitter. And again, just buy a team, dude. Buy yeah. an NFL team. That's way cooler. He walked into the lobby with a sink detached, a detached sink mm-hmm. like where you wash your so hands. So Big Cat could piss in it? No, I thought he was like <laughs> throwing the kitchen sink at Twitter, but he was letting that sink in. I feel like Elon's going to – he's like emptying the clip, clip of jokes, and uh, by like mid next week he's be like, wait. I own this. I think so. <laughs> I, I think he liked posting online. He's always been a poster. I'm sure that he's had burner accounts and shit. He got sick of like having his engagement stall out. There are a lot of people that talk shit to him all the time on Twitter. And he's like, yeah, I'll show, I'll show all the haters. I'll buy this whole fucking yeah. thing. And then you'll have to love all my tweets. Yeah. And I mean, credit to him. It's probably going to work. Yeah. We love your tweets. I love your tweets. Elon. Yeah, we love your tweets. Come on. Part of my take. Elon. We love your tweets. And basically I'll just, I'll just yell at you for not owning a professional sports team. Yes. Call you a loser for that. Um, all right. My who's back of the week is, uh, Kyrie Irving being a shithead. So he went, he went, uh, viral and was in the news. He, so last week he posted a link to a documentary that was very anti-Semitic and just like factually incorrect. And then, uh, people were like, dude, that's kind of fucked up. He then did an interview after the Nets lost another game on Saturday night. And in, I think it was like all in within 60 seconds. He's like, I know I have a very powerful platform. And then was like, why are you guys asking me these questions? Uh, like ask me basketball questions. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess I should be shocked. Um, but I'm not because this is what a Duke education gets you. Uh, Duke grads just being dumb are like, that's, that's not you know, that's just what happens. Kyrie, right? He graduated from Duke. Yeah, he graduated from Duke. Same. Uh-huh. Yeah. In one year. Yeah, he, one year. Yeah, he got yeah. so much education. But there's no one in the world who thinks they're smarter than they are than Kyrie Irving. Like, he thinks he's the smartest person in the world. And he yeah. is not. He has no depth whatsoever. So, yeah, Kyrie Irving is uh, he's performing a useful activity, though, which is the media is now talking about Kyrie being the story on the Nets. And not Ben Simmons yeah. having more fouls yeah. than he has made field goals. Yeah, that's, that's cool, nice. I guess. It's like a distraction. Now, at what cost? Uh, raging anti-Semitism. Yeah, yeah, and just being like, I'm just posting it. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm just posting it so people can then watch it. Yeah, he said that he's not endorsing it. Yeah. So I like to do that a lot is I just take a bunch of things I don't agree with. Yeah. And I just post links so that people can buy copies of, like, here's why I think the world is flat. Yeah. Just because, you know, 
stretch your mind out. He sucks, man. He's he's he just sucks. He just sucks. He also seems miserable. Yeah, well, he, I, I think he thinks that he's like an intellectual, and then when he's when he. When he does this shit and then tries to explain it and backtrack it and then also like get out of it, it's like, dude, you don't, you can't even, you can't even stand by whatever you're trying to like. You're provoc, you're you're being a provocateur. But then when you, when people ask you about it directly, you're like, I don't know, I love all people. Or he's like, he's what? he's just being like, it's my right to yeah. post that. It's like, right. Yeah, okay, no, you're right. It is your right. It's our right to call you an idiot. Yeah. Then why? But why? Yeah. Why are you doing that? And then he doesn't want to answer. The There's why no follow up. Yeah. yeah. Like I would understand if, if if you at least can can uh, have a debate. I I wouldn't respect his. Uh, you know, posting of anti-Semitic shit, but at least it'd be like, well, at least he's thinking about it and he's, I don't know, standing behind it, but he's not even doing that. No, he's just, he's just like lobbing a firecracker into a crowd and then, just and then it explodes. And everybody's like, yo, why the fuck did you do that? He's like, he's like, why are you questioning me about these things? Yeah, I love all people. It's such my right. I would never, yeah. I would never hurt anybody. The, why, why aren't you guys asking me about basketball? Aren't you basketball reporters? Yeah. Um, yeah. So Kyrie Irving being an idiot is back. Hank, do you feel like vindicated by everything that Kyrie's done afterwards? Not vindicated. I'm just happy he's not our problem. Right. Yeah. But like that feels like you guys have because you know there was a time when it was like, oh, what you know, Kyrie versus Boston. What was going on here? It's like everything he's done in the last two years. Like, no, he was the problem. Yep. It's kind of like a a Russ a, a Russell Wilson Seattle situation, but different, but but similar in a way. Well, yeah, and he didn't. Russell, Russell Wilson's Wilson not didn't doing go this out shit, and shit yeah. on the fucking Seahawks fans and and yeah. say it's the worst place to play. I feel bad because the signs were there. First, first they came for Lucky the Leprechaun, and yeah. I said nothing. I'm 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 correcting that right now, Kyrie. Yeah. You're full of shit. Yeah, uh, Billy. So after the Michigan Michigan State game, which Michigan beat Michigan State pretty badly, there was a altercation in the tunnel leaving the field into the locker rooms where Jaden McBurrows was jumped by many Michigan State players in the tunnel. They were it's a uh, quite the video, uh, sort of a total gang up on this one player who after the game, uh, Jane McBurrows sort of ran into, there's one tunnel, ran into the locker room uh, area uh, with most of the Michigan State team, sort of, usually they kind of separate the teams when that happens, uh, but he sort of ran in in the wrong crowd, sort of also high-fiving fans, yeah. kind of a little bit of taunting, but nothing to sort of, uh, nothing sort of deserves to for you to be like stomped out by a bunch of dudes. But sort of kind of. I would of agree with that team. Yeah, like definitely, definitely being probably an asshole before. Yeah, but but it's also it's always when it, when something like this happens, it's like hey, Michigan State, um, you could have had that fire and fury when you were getting your shit kicked in on the football field, like that. It always is like yeah, it's like a boxer trying to fight after a fight. So like yeah. you guys had the chance to to be physically imposing to to your opponent yeah. for 60 minutes and you fail and i have no problem at all with what jim harbaugh did at the end of that game where yeah. he was like calling trick plays and shit i wish he had covered. To put it on him yeah i wish he had covered. yeah he was one he was probably trying to cover the spread two i don't know if you've never watched college football before or paid attention during a college football season but style points actually matter oh yeah they matter especially in rivalry games and for the longest time it was like harbaugh can't beat any of his rivals He's just he's going to try to score as many points as he possibly can on every opponent that he plays against and you every, ha- every and you can you can try to stop him you're welcome to do that on the field but you can't get mad at it afterwards. Yeah, every rivalry should be like that. Every rivalry should have the team if you have the upper hand you should try to bury your opponent because guess what? You get to play again the next year. Yeah. And you should shit talk after, shouldn't do that. Shouldn't shouldn't jump a player in the, in the tunnel, but I want rivalries to be not cordial. At at any point Credit to Mel Tucker, though. Mel Tucker did go out and, like, try to shake Harbaugh's hand, and it seemed like a pretty normal post-game yeah. interaction because he knows, yeah. Well, like, and he's, yeah, he has $95 And million. he's getting paid. <laughs> he's getting paid. Actually, if, he had one, if, one good year. if Harbaugh was smart, he would actually do everything possible to not get Mel Tucker fired. Yes. So he could continue to play against him for the next five, six, yes. seven years. Yes. Uh, what were you going to say, Bill? Then there was another player, a Michigan player, Michigan defensive back, Jamin Green, who also got hit with a, a helmet in the tunnel. Yeah, I mean, that's that's some lame shit to be taking off your helmet and swinging at people assault. in a tunnel. Yeah. That's assault. So That's assault. assault. Fighting's back. Yeah. Fighting is back. Fighting is back. Yeah. There's also some fighting in D3. 
heard there's a little scuffle between Amherst and Wesleyan. Oh, but, wow. Uh, those yeah. are some okay. lesser programs. Yeah, no, Amherst. Yeah, that's expected. Of yeah, that's I, expected. I, I honestly yeah. expect nothing, yeah. nothing more out of those two. It's crazy. Yeah. Ragamuffins the lot. Yeah. Uh, Jake, finish us off. Uh, my who's back is cheating. Apparently, Martin Maldonado of the Astros used an oh. illegal bat. Interesting. During the World Series. Now, Jake, wait, wait. You said cheating. That's a very specific word. I seem to recall the phrasing that was used. The bat was against Major League Baseball rules. Which had, I guess was, that is cheating. Yeah, no, wait, wait, I, I mentioned that's exactly had, cheating. Had anyone else been using this bat? Uh, not this year. At least. No, no one else? Albert Pujols? Maybe? Oh, what? Mm-hmm. Seriously? He was allowed to use it, though. Oh. Oh, he was grandfathered in. For how long? A while, right? Yeah, 13 years. I oh, think. wow. That's yeah, a long yeah. grandfathering yeah. in. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I'm yeah. not, I am not. I actually didn't know. I didn't hear the story, so I was just asking for details. So, Martin Maldonado used it World Series Game 1. So, the yes. Astros, are they accused of being, che- or being cheaters right now? Why isn't this a bigger, bigger story? I don't know. Why isn't Jake? the media talking about it? It's the Astros. Yeah. Cr- it's crickets. It. If Patrick Mahomes does that, the media won't the shut up. the details, but if this were the Yankees, good night. Mm-hmm. I like good night. Well, they'd I have like to nice. make it to the World Series. That's no, you're right. No, that's, that's, a valid that's a fair point, shot. Annie. That's a valid point. But if Aaron Judge had this or anyone on the Yankees. Well, Jake, I, I'm saying we are making a big deal because it is the Astros. Yeah. That also is true. It's, yes. Yeah. I mean, it prob- like how big of a rule breaker is it? I don't know. They but. cheated. Again. And yeah. so did Albert Pujols. But the Grand Astros blew that game where he That's used true. the illegal bats. So. Yeah, so quickly, yeah. Max, how are we feeling? 1-1. One, one. Steal the game, game one. You, you get one on the road. Game two did not go so well. I saw a stat that was crazy. The Astros um, have given up the same amount of earned runs in the postseason as the Braves and the Mariners. The Braves and the Mariners were both eliminated in the divisional round. Wow. That's insane. So the Astros are pretty good. How are we feeling? Um, good. Oh no, that's that's how, that was a question. That mark was at the end. bad. Well, g- that was bad. I'm just gonna let you know. I'm from where I'm sitting. The way you answered that question, I'm worried about Game Three. McCullers versus Syndergaard is tough. Um, but Banks a tough place to play. Yeah, they, have, they haven't oh, played at no. the bank yet. And they haven't played at the bank, and this is this is where we go. And I talk myself back into okay, it. All right, all right. But game one was like the best game of all time. It basically should have ended the World Series sh- right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean that it was that was my that was like a Super Bowl win, right? Yeah. There. If we didn't, was, oh no, yeah. this is bad. No, 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 no. If we didn't have all these like stat nerds like Dan Heron saying, "Oh, the World Series should be seven games long," hang the banner. You guys would already be champions. No, you've made some mistakes. Hang the banner. That's not what I. That's not what I meant. 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 All I'm saying is that it'd be like at the Super Bowl if after one quarter. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, game one was electric win. We took one. In, we took one in Houston. That was the job to do. Going in, okay, yeah. going he's, in. He's mustering you, you took, up. Strength. You wish, took home field. Yeah, correct. I wish our two aces didn't give up ten runs in the first two games. That's a little worrying, knowing that Syndergaard is pitching tomorrow. But got to play at the bank. Got to play at the gotta bank. Got to play at the bank. Tough place to play. Got to play. At it the is bank. going to be rocking this week. Yeah. I'm fired up. I'm fired up for this my guys. Is, okay, so you, it, for. Anyone who's not following the World Series, I'll just distill Max's answer real quick. He essentially just said the Astros are a far better team, but Philly fans are so loud they will hopefully win three games for them. You just gotta say, Max, why not? Why not us? <laughs> that's that's pretty much what you just said. Why not us? The JT Realmuto home run was sick. Also, that's <laughs> I really I really want to emphasize that was awesome. <laughs> Can we get and some and I, one more thing that I really have to say, <laughs> one more thing that I really have to say is that those umpires should be in jail for saying that that ball was a home run, the Schwarber ball was a home run, because that was ridiculous. Which one? Well, foul he, ball. he hit a ball that was clearly foul. It got all. It got. It got called a home run. It got called a home run. He rounded the bases. He touched home plate. You can't do that. You could see that it's foul. Should, yeah. Call a foul. On the, you can't. He got exhausted. Yeah. How could you? <laughs> I got exhausted. I got exhausted. Yeah. As soon as, it took everything out of me, yeah, and it t- took everything out of Philadelphia in that game. 
and it shouldn't. It's not right. All it's the, not right. All the Phillies fans that were there probably got really loud, and they couldn't get as loud for the rest of the game. Who there seems to be a lot of uh, you know rumors going about who's singing this national anthem tonight. Yeah, who is it? Who is it? Is um, it Boys to Men? Bruce Springsteen. I was. Is it Will I was, Smith. Well, Taylor it, Swift sung it in 08. I Meek seeing, Mill. If it's Bruce Springsteen, the Big J's no cheering oh in the press my box. God. Mm-hmm. What will get the bank going the loudest? Meek Mill? No, Meek Mill was Sly Stallone. <laughs> no, say. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't care about that. Nick Foles. Nick Foles just whips his dick out. Nick Foles would be great. I don't wow. know. I don't know. I don't care about the about the anthem. I need Syndergaard Whoa. to give me. Oh, Max Capri. <laughs> oh man, it would be awesome. Kneel? Are you gonna kneel? Uh, this is I need Syndergaard. I need Syndergaard to give me five strong right, innings and hey, the colors listen, you know blow up at the bank. Listen, you, you know it'd be sick if it if the roots all came out there. Yeah, and the roots somehow performed. The roots together. are great. Roots are great. Listen, no, no one goes into the bank and comes out alive. Haven't lost at home yet. Haven't, haven't lost, lost at home. At home. Let's haven't get lost that at home. confidence haven't back lost up. At home. This segment has gone terribly for you. I know, I know, I know. But it's going to be okay. It's, it's late. It's, it's 4 late. o'clock it's in the morning. Four, 4.30 it's 4 in the morning. O'clock in it's the actually, morning. we're actually a half hour from yeah, first pitch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm ner- you know, it's jitters. You know, yeah. it's, it's after game one, I said we were. I, I would have said we we're going to sweep. And then after game two, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, no, I don't happens. like that Wheeler right. just got Win game three. Whatever. Win Max, game three. You got to watch some YouTube compilations of Syndergaard back when he was good pitching. Also, all right, and just tell just tell yourself yeah. like, like yes. you can you can will him and the adrenaline Thor. that's going to be going Thor. through his system. Thor, Thor. Thor is coming Thor. back. Thor. And I'll give you one more. Justin Verlander, that for as good as his career is. Yeah. He's one, he's one in seven in games he started in the World Series. Correct, but we, but we already beat him. Yeah, I know, but you got to you got to we got to see him again. I know. I know. There we you go. There's another again. win. I'm, wait, I'm, I'm, wait, Verlander. He's never won a World Series game. No, you, I I saw the stat. It was one in seven. I think. No, I don't think Justin. Oh, Justin really? Verlander's never won a World no, Series. He, game. No, he might not have won it. Ga- his team. His team. His team, team is yeah, one yeah, in yeah. seven but, in games he started. But Verlander himself. Yes. And he looks so fucking old now. He looks like he's Justin Verlander's dad. Yeah. He's big time. Old. Oh, shout out Kyle Schwarber. America, you get free tacos. Yep. Because Kyle Schwarber stole yes. a base. My fucking And isn't God. that a free subscription here? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Kyle yeah. Schwarber got America a free subscription to part well, of no, my No, I thought we needed a, ch- a triple or something. Oh, we oh, may have we changed forgot. the rules No, we a said bit. something else. Did we, yeah, we, yeah, we switch it? A triple thing. or like a... F- was it a balk? A balk. A balk. Yeah, a balk. Fuck. We're still balk. got to wait. So no free subscriptions. I want it on the record. I'm very confident going. <laughs> yeah, <into the laughs> yeah, okay. I want. Right. I, I, I yeah. I'm just very confident. You just did a PS. Yeah. PS. Yes. PS. PS. Yes. Don't don't Everything get it twisted. Say, yeah. Doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. No. Love my guys. We're gonna win the next three games. We won't even go back to Houston. And Phil, just remember, five. Max. Just remember, if a fight starts between the fans and the Astros, Philly will kick their ass. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, there will. I mean, there won't be any Houston fans in Philly. It's fine. No, and I'm saying the actual players. Oh, sure. Yeah, the entire whatever. stadium versus the actual players. You <laughs> I, was the I was talking no, about the no. fans. I was talking about the fans. I think that. you guys could beat up the Astros. Said. 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 Talking about the fightings. I also want to clean up the uh, competitive uh, bat thing. It was not a competitive issue. It was a player safety issue. The ah, was that's what they say. After illegal. Cheating. So Astros like fans. So Albert Pujols was putting the entire Tua MLB at, to play. at risk. Astros the last fans are going to tweet at me, but they're going to tweet at me before listening to the full show. So somebody could have so. died. No, listen. Astro fans are not going to tweet at you because they heard uh, Max just like we're going to score so many runs this week. No, we're going to so score gonna so like, many runs. They this turned week. off the episode no, 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 as no, no, soon as no, Max no, no, started puking on himself. They're like, World Series won. We're going to score yeah. so many rounds. <laughs> so it looks like that they're not going to get in trouble. All right, let's do numbers. Hank, have you ever won this? Nope. New PMTV. Hank versus the Machine. Go watch it. It was great. You've never won it? Nope. Damn. I thought you... I'm calling Josh. No, because they didn't cover. <laughs> kind of took the... Fuck you. Why are you laughing like that? Oh. I just won you... The only bet you won today was a CLP. That That's was... true, but the, the things yeah. you were saying to me before about making up yeah. fan fiction and yeah. how great it would be. It if... was fun. Yeah. It cost me another own for a week, too. Yeah, that's, I'm always eight. Yeah. yeah. So an an hungry, dog, dog, is hungry Dog? There's a big shift in the standings. Hungry Dog hasn't won this year. Damn. I might just do what you do and make what, it like minus one. What are the standings, Jake? I didn't make it. I don't <laughs> fight. Fuck you, Hank. Don't lash <laughs> they out. Caught you can't win first right now. Me and you, PFT, jumped up to a top for a second with Hank. It turns out Hank. It turns out maybe all of us suck at gambling, and Hank isn't the sharpest like he was. Yeah, Big Cat at 16-16. Boom. Try to fade that, bitch. You can't. You'll lose either way. 
Seventeen. Right. Josh. Uh, sixty-nine. Eighteen. Oh fuck! I said it first. Sorry, oh, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Sorry. I'm gonna go with. Oh, I said it first. Fuck. I'm gonna go with three for Russ. I don't. I mean, I said it first. Let's I, ride. I, Twenty-one. Okay. Twenty. We're gonna score so many runs. Let's ride. Someone gave me shout out the guy who gave me that idea. He's like, why don't you say sixty-nine before Billy if it keeps hitting? I was like, good point. Fifty. Oh, you gotta be quick to the draw now, Billy. Yeah. Someone did point out they're like sixty-nine has won six times. Why doesn't? Why don't you just say it first? Fifty like, seventh time now, tied for third place. I got I got fucking backseat. Billy's everywhere now. What do you mean? <laughs> I just got too much too much information coming my way. What do you about mean? About how to win this. What do you mean? Backseat <laughs> Billy's? What? Is it true, Hank? I saw people saying I just had it, people DMing me all is, this shit. Is and it's it? like I I just clear out. Let me let me do Wait, me. they're pretending like it's not a game of chance? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. And then I think start thinking about it. Well, I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, wait, so Hank, is it true though that you guessed sequentially from one to a hundred, but you missed one number and that number hit? People were saying that. <laughs> I, I. The streets are saying. I don't that. think you did it all the way, but you did it for a little. There bit. was well, all right, no. It? So like, I, I was doing it, but obviously I'm me, and I. There was a couple times where I forgot. Like, was I on twenty three or twenty four? And then that happened. Where I, I'm pretty sure that happened. You. So you. And missed, I said it. I said it in real time. I, I remember that. Oh my yeah. god. Right, people can people That's can follow up with what number it was, but. That so was you a, had a plan that would have worked, and you still failed. Potentially. <laughs> Unconfirmed. Honestly, that's that's like a. By the way, his plan also made no sense. Like there's right. There is no way that you but can did, plan for but this it machine. Did make sense. But it ended up making sense. But, but he, he screwed it up. It. <laughs> you designed the world's worst plan oh. that worked, but you didn't execute your terrible plan yeah. correctly. Hey, maybe next episode, Hank. But when we all we, know that's not. When happen. do we start calling the numbers? When's the first moment we can start calling numbers? What do you mean? Well, just for the future. Oh, I'm in his head now with the 69 that I got. It first. I think once it says, <laughs> yeah. all right, numbers. It says, say, all right, right, numbers. But he he's, he shoots the gun, so he has, like, he can call. He knows no, what's right. going to happen. I, I actually disagree. I think he has to say numbers, and then yeah. you have, like, a half breath. <laughs> yeah, I don't say it right away. You but can he, go back and check. I do not okay. usually say the first All right, number. numbers. Or, <gasps> I'm, I'm can I just have 69? This, this might be PFT. unpopular. No. You, take 69 next time. This might be unpopular, but I think that you should be able to share numbers. No. As long as you no. have gotten Should it Should we do a draft? No, no. Should we just go on no. a snake? Listen, I said 69 first. got to be on your toes now. Fuck. <laughs> it's really, it's like, can't I just have my thing number? I just added to... No, it keeps winning. <laughs> Why makes want, it yours? Yeah. He wants the sex number so much. Yeah. Because you guys aren't don't have the balls to choose it every time like I do. You don't even like 69 Yeah, you don't. Yeah. You said that you don't. Yeah. You're more of a head-to-head -head guy. <laughs> uh, dolphins can't oh! stop. Oh! <laughs> You can't even. You're uncomfortable with the number sixty nine. Yet you call it your number. It is my number. It's like yin and the yang. Do you like being on top or on bottom? Depends. And you ever done a standing sixty nine? Yeah. Oh, why do you think Billy. I lift all these weights? Damn. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Didn't you guys have a bet? Oh, oh no! Good call, oh Jake. God. We did yes! have a bet. Jake, 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 Jake yes. is the motherfucker yes. who asked. Jake. You no. didn't collect the homework. No. You didn't collect the no. homework. That wasn't no. me. Jake. You didn't collect the homework. Jake. That was never Jake. me. I, they asked he me to keeps remind track of everything. Jake did literally just do that. Jake <laughs> yeah. understands but we what are you didn't collect the homework. Right We're now. dumb. So it, how this show works is <laughs> me, Big yes. Cat, and Hank forget everything. <laughs> I, I Billy, really do feel like that kid. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Billy tries to pretend that all the bad things don't exist, and then Jake makes sure that everybody's being honest. It's oh, called so, the optimism. Man. I promise I never did that in school. Uh, so yeah. No, I Billy, what are we going to do? Because I got the hot sauce right here. All right, well, let's go. Get, are we going to do it on air again? Yeah, might as well. Just go grab it. Go, go quick. Go grab a cheesesteak. Where is it? Mm. It's in the fridge. Oh, All go right. grab oh, it. Go you grab guys it. saved one? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I saved Jake. a couple. All right, Billy, we said douse. Jake. I'm going to do another number while Hank's We said gone. douse. Let's see if we can get 17. <laughs> 69. 69. 69. 69. This would be incredible. This doesn't count, right? This doesn't count. Nine. Do another one. Wow, I really feel like that kid. I feel dirty right now, Billy. I'm sorry. Mean, Jake, I we needed that. I would have felt so dumb. I feel I feel Also, gross. it's for the AWLs. Yeah. They would have been like, how come Billy didn't? Well, like, that is the homework thing. 
so Billy just left, and I think he's going to try to convince Hank 12. to let him cheat. He's doing something underhanded. I'm not sure what it is. Dude, I, I kind of got him off his game by just saying 69 before. <laughs> Thanks. I can't remember who said it, but someone tweeted me. They're like, if 69 so, always wins, just say it first. Billy, I was like, That's, I never thought of that. Billy is like legitimately angry that somebody else is, is doing the sex number. <laughs> he's like, that's my joke. I, I think Billy thinks he invented 69. Yeah. Oh, the stake's here. Hey, Hank, I was and actually Billy's just saying here. something great about the Celtics again while you were gone. Hank, I did two random ones that, that didn't count. 12 and 9, so it wasn't your number still. Great. So that might have wasted two that you would have lost. Do you want more batting practice? you want to do another one? Nope. Let's do batting practice. I'll do one more. A 17. Seven. These don't count. These do not count. No, nope, it's batting practice. Yeah, but it's like a free, you know. Yeah, but it's Mickey C1, Mouse because C1 it's 197 now. Yeah, these don't count. Ooh. 17, no, 47. Oh, I saw the God, seven. I saw the seven. That scared oh the fuck my out God, of him. That I was awesome. See the seven. That scared I, I couldn't see the seven. Oh. Where'd Billy go? Uh, he probably went home. <laughs> Did you guys already put hot sauce on it? No. no. Okay. These are the, the true people. The, the true AWLs are still listening right now. Max, would you like to say anything about I the I just Phillies? really want to say <laughs> that the Phillies are going to score a ton of runs. I, I, <laughs> I'm I'm going through a, I'm going through it right now. I'm going th yeah. I, it's just all in my head. I'm I like, feel uh, you like, no, no, I uh, well uh I'm feel playing at the links hard. I mean it's so it's winning tough. that first it's game, that's pretty much that's all I needed in the that's World not, Series. I know. Once, once yeah, we won that I first said game, bad things. I should have said that. Game one was better things. than a Super Bowl. <laughs> all right. That's not true. I the one that I that. ate last time. I don't time, know why, why that was coming out of my mouth. The one I ate last time is way worse than this. I did Billy a favor. I gave him, it's not a dousing. This is a, a thorough soaking. I soaked it. Not doused. All right, Billy. Oh, he brought milk. Billy, I put less on it than I had when I ate it last week. You and also, this. some of this is a Chipotle one, so it had some discoloration. I didn't put that much on there. I put. He's got to go to sleep after. He's got to go to sleep. <laughs> it's so hot in my mouth. Good luck, Billy. At least it's cold. Billy, you want to go sit down in front of a mic? Yeah. Can we be done after this? Yeah. For this? Okay. yeah, yeah sure. I, I didn't force you to take this bet. Sure. I know, I took this bet, <laughs> yeah. but like after this one, let's. This what you did the first time, though, where you. you Took the bet and then got mad. I well, I didn't take the bet originally. Right, going kind of forward, Billy, you this should time say I took no. the bet. Just yeah. say no. Okay. Hot sauce. Just say no. Okay. Just but I'm doing no. this one. All right. But like, I'm just gonna. I'm just you know. For the record, we are going to try and get you to agree to them in the future. <laughs> you have to say no. Oh, you guys should do a hot sauce bet for the next Pats Jets game. I, I will. No, I actually thought no. we'd do one for this one. Yeah. No. No, he, Billy has to shoot himself with a arrow. Gun. No, 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 no. No, it <laughs> yeah, was if I. Arrow, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a bow and arrow. <laughs> no, no. If it was if I'd won if the Jets yeah, won yeah. both games. Yeah. Okay, pre milking the milk. All right, just take two bites and send the Took show. Took a chaser sh chaser saw. <laughs> it's pre milking. <laughs> How's it Ow! Taste? It's so hot. All right. All right. See everyone on Wednesday. <laughs> Love you guys. Ow! Ay, ay, ay! How's it taste, Billy? Ow! <laughs> this is what the bet's all about. It is pretty spicy. Are you going to do an animal fact? Dolphins can't smell. Oh, fuck. <laughs>